of Racing. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the World Center of Racing, Daytona Beach, kicking off the 23 season right here at Daytona. Round number one is tonight. Round number two, tomorrow night. We're getting ready to get started. The first round of practice here today in the Mission Super Twins. There's a look at the track that's actually turn three and turn number four. We're located just outside turn number one of the Daytona International Speedway, the big track. We're at the Daytona flat track here tonight. The Super Twins are rolling onto the racetrack. They had a practice day all day and evening yesterday. This is the first time the bikes have been on the track here on race day. There's number three, Briar Bauman on a brand new ride. Rick Ware racing KTMs. He got faster every time he went out there yesterday. Right behind him, the 32 Dallas Daniels. First round of practice. Briar in that brand new KTM just got it a few days ago. He rode it once before yesterday. Got faster and faster every time he went out there. It's a KTM Super Duke. There's a look at some of the times right now. This first practice session. Brandon Robinson, the two-time winner at this track on a twin. One-time winner on a single. Out front so far on the speed charts. First round of practice. Dallas Daniels a close second on the Essence Racing Yamaha. Beach third, his teammate. Sammy Halbert slides up in there in the fifth position. And here on the red limiters at the end of the straightaway, it's more prevalent on the 450s, but it sounds like they're hitting them here on these twins as well. Two groups of riders, 25 total entries here in the Mission Super Twins. Dallas Daniels look at him slide his slide all the way back over that rear tail section and then chopping the throttle a couple different times going into three. Track is racy right now. Checkered flag is out. 44 Robinson, a 18.145 quick time so far. Two groups. Of Super Twins. It's Robinson Daniels, J.D. Beach, Jared Meese. Briar slides back to the fifth position. You can see the orange right there. That's for KTM. Behind Briar, Sammy Halbert, sixth. Dan Bromley in seventh. Bronson Bauman, eighth. He's on a new brand as well. He's also on a KTM. 25, Ben Lout, 67, Davis Fisher. There is group number two. Ready to go. There's Mikey Rush. Got his first career win down in Daytona in 2007. And that was at the Old Track Municipal Stadium, but he has won here as well on a single-cylinder motorcycle. Hasn't won on a twin yet. There's the 10 of Johnny Lewis making the move up here to the Super Twins class. The 94 is there as well. That's Ryan Wells there on the Royal Infield team. 98, Kale Koch, and the 90 right there moving on is Brandon Newman. Both of these two guys right here got their first wins in Daytona. In the premier class. Johnny Lewis is one here in the production twins class as well. Big P, our flagman back again. Fifth season for Big P. There's dad and son talking it over. Joe Cop right there on the left and Cody Cop, the defending champ on the right in the AFT singles class. I like that they're watching the twins right now, seeing where the line is developing. Here's the 77. It's Jordan Harris on the Ryan Barnes Racing KTM, Schaefer's Motorsports KTM. Yes, there's two groups of Super Twins. This is the second group, 25 entries in the Super Twins class. 
biggest this class has been in quite some time. Johnny Lewis is taking the Royal infield up to fifth right now. Slides everybody back one position. And there's only one Twins class this year. It's combined. Super Twins, Production Twins are combined into one. And that's why the entries is larger. Joining me in the booth is my partner. She usually is track side, but she's up here checking out my booth. Kristen B, welcome to Daytona. Thank you. I wanted to enjoy uh, the view from here. As everyone knows, when it comes to the Daytona short track, you have... <laughs> I can't... <laughs> you, saw, you, you, you came up here to be in the air-conditioned booth for a little while. I, I, don't know I, know, what, I know the truth. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I was uh -huh. escaping the roost. And the that's roost. something I've talked to a lot of the yeah. writers about. Yeah, there you and, are. And, uh, you know, it, it's very similar to Lima in a way where some riders will leave the track with bruises on their arms. And white dust all over. <laughs> white moon dust. It's moon dust. Moon dirt. Moon dirt. Yeah, so it makes moon dust. Correct. Right. Moon I dirt, like it. moon dust. Moon, and exactly. it, it's a very fine kind of powdery. It's almost like baking soda. You know. Look, you can, see the, you can see the white stuff coming off right off the edge of the tires. The checkered flags come out in group number two of your Mission Super Twins. Robinson at the top spot, 18.145. No surprise there, right, B? No, I mean, he won here. Uh, he swept the weekend back in 2019, I believe it was. 2020. 2020, 2020 when mm -hmm. we were here last. And uh, both wins, both nights. So. Here comes the singles. There's your defending champ. They come out in practice here today. Uh, looks like the water truck's making its way into the track, but looks like they come out according to their point standings from last year. So mm -hmm. that means the defending champ comes out first. And right next to him on that front row of the grid is Dalton Gautier, who, uh, despite moving from a factory team to now a private privateer team has not skipped a beat yesterday during those test sessions fastest of the day and i mean that's so exciting especially to see him on a steel frame again uh the last time he was on a steel frame 2019 when he won his singles championship and uh, there's robbie bobby who is now team manager pretty exciting i love the colors too the orange and the purple looks good i mean the yeah. whole get up looks good and it's a trendy effort. yeah it's exactly. really trendy yeah but uh definitely exciting for cody cop i mean he's looking to defend his championship and that's the big question with the the parody that we've seen in the last few years, how competitive this class is, can he do it again? Is he equipped to do it again? And then there, Dalton Gautier, of course, one of the riders who moving into the singles class, uh, not last year, but the year before that, uh, when he was with Turner Racing Honda, you know, we, we expected a lot of Dalton Gautier, but he just wasn't comfortable. This year, he told me my goal is to have fun, and uh, he's doing that. He did that yesterday. The vibes are good there in that paddock. So I'm excited to see what he will do along with Cody Cop, who's next to him. Absolutely. And then the Turner Hondas, they, they're lined up right beside him and behind him. They've filled that position that Dalton was in with the 48. And he's with he get was low, my, Trent Low. He was uh, get low, Trent Low. That's <laughs> it, huh? So I've called him the sleeper all last year, and he doesn't like that nickname. He told me today that he doesn't like it. He wants to get rid of it. Yeah. I heard him, and uh, he was explaining that he wants to shake it off. Like, listen, we get it. He's good. Everyone knows he's good, but he needs to put the results to paper, and, and that's what this season is about. But he has the resources to finally do that because when he was with Wally Brown Racing and Suzuki, they had a great team. They were still developing that bike, however. Now he's on a proven bike. He's on a Honda. He's on a bike that can win championships. He has all the resources. He knows what it's like to be a privateer and just work with his dad now all the puzzle pieces are coming together for him it'll be a good year for the 48 trent low from guilford indiana so we're taking a look at dg 79 there's Robbie. oh Bobby. there's the course, man Robbie. Course, Bobby. Give of course us we had to have yeah, that absolutely just giving us a kiss over right. there he said fire him up turn him loose group number one about to roll onto the racetrack scotty i don't know about you i know the super twins are the premier class but there's something about this singles class you cannot look away it's stacked and we've got a slew of brand new riders we'll talk about those in the later groups but we have 44 entries here today only the fastest 32 will make it into the night show Kristen. And one of those riders who will undoubtedly have a presence and be a force here at the Daytona Short Track, Cody Cobb leading the group out onto the track. And something I've talked to a lot of the riders about qualifying. These practice sessions are so important this year, especially because we don't have as many double headers, but particularly here at the Daytona Flat Track, because when you look at this track and how important it is to lead the group coming off of turn one, you won't see as many passes. You're not gonna see a guy like at a mile go from P7 up to the front row. However, he here. Guys, I mean, it's all about where you start. And Cody Kopp is really off to a great start right now, looking at his times. 18.5, that's already faster than the fastest time we saw yesterday. That's really fast. The track, you know, what's good about Daytona when it's a doubleheader, you know, dating back to even the other track, the first day 
they figure out what the track's going to do. Then they had the night to go back and figure out how to prep it different for the next day. So we had that whole day yesterday. Mm -hmm. They went back there. They've changed the racetrack. They they reconfigured the corners just a little bit. Yesterday was a lot of rubber down, but it was rough. Today it's really smooth. Absolutely. And what uh, I spoke with Morgan Mishler just a moment ago before they went out, and he said you can prep this track a hundred different ways, and it's going to give you a hundred different results because it is so inconsistent. So as a rider, being adaptable on this track is really important. Now, Scotty, as we see Max Will kind of lean into this turn, I'm watching the bikes in the rear wheel just kind of float out a little bit, but I noticed on Cody Cobb it was skipping a bit. Why is that? I didn't see it, Kristen, but there's several different reasons. It depends on if he's on the brake going to the corner. It could be some braking bumps already starting to develop right there. You can see, look how low that air pressure is in that Dunlop. So that's that could be part of it, too. It could be bouncing if they got too right. much air pressure. Like, Max has a really nice kind of smooth drift angle going out, and I saw a little skipping from Cody. And There's the wizard, Jeffrey Carver, Jr. He's over here watching the times on the app right here, just like you can be watching at home. He is actually helping out Gary Burtwistle, who will be out here just a little bit on the 111, one of our British riders. White flag waving. Cody Kopp and Max Whale, teammates taking the one and two spot. Trent Lowe, Chad Coase coming in at fourth for this qualifying session, this practice session, I'm sorry. And uh, Dalton Gautier right there in fifth. Chad Coase actually sliding in at third and on that final lap. And he's still on the first impressions team, but they have moved to Husk Barna. Right, another steel the, frame. And so the frame, the bikes that they were running last year. So and checker flags out. This is the first time that Chad Coase has ridden and raced on a steel frame. He was telling me it's very reactive. So that's something he's trying to, to train himself to relate to because of how reactive that bike is because he said on the Hondas and on some of the Suzuki's he's learned how to kind of gauge how those bikes will respond here it's a completely different animal there you go and there's another look at a ride of this with us full time on the Estes and Yamaha it's the bomber Tom Drain. The Bomber, is that the nickname That guess? is the nickname. How did he earn that nickname? That came from Australia. That's the what I've been told. So uh, I'm not sure. Look, he's got look like 95 on his leathers. That's J.D. Beach's leathers. But uh, turn the 95 <laughs> around, you got a 59. So yeah. he'll close be enough. out there. Yeah, it's close enough. He'll get out there and get some seat time. He is an Aust He won the Australian Flat Track Championship last year. And he was so impressive when we saw him in Lima. Not only did he win the dash for cash, but, I mean, he was a force. And I think if we would have gotten that Springfield race in, he was the fastest guy there. Had we not had the rain out, I think that would have been his race. It definitely could have. I mean, it, and it's good because he's a road racer also, so that's why Springfield was in his wheelhouse and also the loose track at Lima. That's what they have a lot of loose tracks over there, and they call them long tracks. So he fit, he fit right at home on both of those tracks. So we'll see how he does on some of the rest of our tracks, but he looked very good yesterday in practice. Another rider looking really good yesterday in practice, your friend from the UK. Yeah, yeah. Burt Whistle looks very strong. I talked to him last year. He said, if I ever get an opportunity to come over here to the States and race on a short track, he wanted to see how he stacked up against the Americans, and that's what he's doing here today. He finished up there near the top of the leaderboard at the end of the day. So he will be out in one of the later groups right now on the track. Is the 63. That's the Jet Jared Lowe, and right behind him is the 99 Kevin Stallings. So we'll see if they can work their way up to the top of the leaderboard. Stallings currently in the 18th spot. And speaking of international presence, six countries represented this weekend in the American Flat Track Series paddock. That is so impressive. It is, and, and it, it shows how important this, this this sport is here in America, but it's also how important it is in the world. So they want to come over here and see where they stack up against the Americans. We have a Spanish flat track champion. We have an Australian champion, a uh, Canadian champion in Hunter Bauer that's been with us for a couple of years now. So it, it is. They all want to see how they stack up against the Americans. We even have a rider from the Czech Republic this weekend. Absolutely. Can't wait to see him. He'll be out, well, I think the third or fourth group. It's Urban Pajopic. Yeah. He'll be out in just a little bit. That's the 341. Scotty, where do you think this track will trend? I kind of see the line coming in a little bit, and we know it's going to be narrow, and it's probably even going to be hard to spot for the riders when it gets, uh, you know, later. But how, how are you going to see? Are they going to move it, high towards the wall? Nope, or are you, nope. Where are it'll, we going? It'll, it'll typically stay on the bottom of the racetrack. It will groove up. Yesterday there was so much rubber, the most rubber I've ever seen down on this racetrack. But what they said in the riders' meeting is, after practice and qualifying is all done, they're going to rip up the track, dig it up, and water Look they, at some of these holes already developing, Scotty, some of these ruts right. off the top. Is that going to make a difference? Do the riders feel that? What's going on right you, there? You can definitely feel it. It will upset the suspension if there's bumps, if there's holes. Right now, those lines are going with the way the bikes are going, that we, the ones we were just looking at. Typically, a hole will form going into three. It just always has and always will. It's like when they're really laying it into the corner, backing off the throttle, the back end will bump, just like that's probably we saw Cody Cop doing earlier, right. and that creates that hole. So some of those holes are unavoidable, but, uh, you know, they're, they're doing the best they can to give us the best racetrack possible. Yeah. 
Speaking of parts plus in the Rick Ware Racing Team, we see Shayna Texter Bauman getting ready to head out into this practice section. And that has been such an exciting story. It is huge. It had just yeah. happened like overnight. And it's mm -hmm. good to see Shayna back in the AFT singles class. She's the winningest singles rider in, his, in the history of our sport in this class. And when I spoke with, with Shayna media day two days ago mm -hmm. Shayna was telling me that this year her role has changed slightly she is also a team manager so her monday through friday look a lot different than they did in seasons past where all she had to worry about was racing this off season especially they've been busy putting this team together but also during the week she's managing a lot of sponsorship relationships so uh her role ha has definitely expanded in the series and she said that's possibly a role for her in the future when she does decide to hang up that steel shoe maybe she'll be the team manager and this is a multi-year deal with right. rick where racing it's incredible what they've invested what they've committed to the sport recently oh i love it stop all stop stop everything we have ellie may mees right there being pushed by sister hayden mees and nicole right there guys just a few days ago nicole giving birth to their second daughter so while jared mees is a looking for his nine ninth, ninth championship. championship he is an eight-time champion he's now a two-time daddy Back to the go. singles class, guys. <laughs> Cody Cop still at the top spot, 18.259. This is group number three on the racetrack. Four groups here today. Look at all the KTMs. The top four spots are KTMs. And that, I mean, just a testament to how good that KTM group is. When you think about the KTMs, the Huskies, Gas Gas, how successful they've been in Supercross and developing those 450s and then now seeing them on track here at the short track. I mean, it, it really is a preferred bike this season. It definitely looks like it so far. The 52 Shane Texter Brownman right here on our screen, currently in the 25th position. Again, only the fastest 32 move on to the night show, and that is typical here at Daytona. Some of the fast guys might not even get to race tonight when the heat races start. Yeah, and as much as we'd like to, you know, think of Shayna as getting out of the gate and she's going to be a front runner, she still has to adjust to this bike because when she last raced in the singles class, the KTM had a completely different chassis. So she's having to essentially race on a brand new bike that she's never ridden before and then moving from the super twin back down to the single. I mean, they have really worked on trying to develop this bike in the last few weeks, but limited time on the bike and a new bike. Shayna has has a big learning curve heading into the state and, track. And she will tell you outright she, this is not one of her favorite racetracks yeah. yes it's on the schedule yes she has to race it is it her favorite track? No. So she, she'll she have to... There are very few riders who look forward to coming to the Daytona Short Track, but the ones that do love it. And they are always up front, too. Checkered flag is out here in group number three. It's still Cody Kopp at the top spot, 18.259. So he's just about a, a, a tenth and a half faster than his teammate, Maxwell. Travis Betton, look at this, the 82 West Coast riders up there in third. Andrew Luker, another West Coast rider in fourth. Justin Jones, a New York rider on the 91, is fifth currently. One more group to go here of our first round of practice. Again, we'll see some new faces in American Flat Track here in this singles class. You have to be 16 to make it to the pro class. And then you got a veteran right there, the 111. The, I was going to say some new and old, the, not old. Veteran, yeah, the, the UK veteran. champion right there, a veteran that mm. has has been over here before and wanted a to try his hand. I mean, to me, too, I mean, looking at Dan Bromley, speaking of the number 62 that we're going to see out there, mm -hmm. this is this is a guy who, talk about a sleeper, um, he's bounced around, raced production twins, raced super twins, and now he's back in the singles class. And when he's in the singles class, you can count on him to lead the lead the field. And I think the taller rider will help out here on this mm -hmm. on this particular racetrack. It Why usually does. You can move around the motorcycle more. You can actually lay the bike over further. Uh, the longer legs helps you lean the bike over further. And then you, when you come off the corner, you can actually push to the back of the seat and get your weight way over that rear wheel, which gets you more traction. So right. there's a couple of reasons, a couple different theories, but that's that's what I believe in. And Bromley always goes good here. So in a sport that usually rewards the more compact, fun-sized rider, a track like this will actually benefit Dan Bromley, who's a little taller. And look, the, the top three guys are all really tall riders right now. So yeah, far, absolutely. so far, it's early. And, and I mean, even look at that, Andrew Luker, to see him P4 right now. That, but everyone said this is a lottery track. It sure is.
All right, so we have Dan Bromley leading the field right now in this session. And Dan Bromley, Dan Bromley has been one of the uh, maybe muted stories of the off season because Dan Bromley ha has not been talked about as much. We, we talk about all these big teams, but when you think about it, Dan Bromley also wanting the winningest riders in the singles class. He's a veteran. He has those cards in his back pocket. Scotty, when you look at Dan Bromley making this move to the singles class, what do you think of it? I love it. And, and he's a winner in both classes. Classes. He won the singles championship before. He knows how to get around a racetrack. He's got Nick Henderson in his in his corner as the team manager. He is just got married. He's got a baby on the way, and I, I love seeing Dan back at the track. He's on, he's going to pick and choose which races he goes to. He's also racing in the Super Twins class today. And white flag is out on that session, guys. When we look at the riders on track right now, I mean, you don't process it as often, but some of these guys are going to go home. This is do or die at this point. Well, and, and you see how smooth and how fast Dan Brownlee looks. He's only 20th quick right now. It is wild, guys. This class is stacked. It is so competitive. That session is now over. You can take a breath. <laughs> Being up in the booth is tough work. I don't know how you guys do it. I don't know how you do what you do. I, I did some of the stand-up earlier, so... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know how you do what you did. We did some stand-ups. You were our field producer and helped me out so we could get that first <laughs> segment in for TV. But uh, you fun. you do fabulous at your job. and You guys are pretty good at, at your job, I, too. I'd rather sit up here. Yeah, I can't wait until uh, we get to... <laughs> Yeah, pro Our producer, Brad, just so everyone at home is right. knowing, uh, just reminded us that there is a refrigerator full of DP, Dr. Pepper, Scotty Dubler's Vice, <laughs> right go. around the corner. We walk into the production truck yesterday, and I look there, and I go, we have a refrigerator now, and it is filled with Dr. Pepper for the, the number one Scotty Dubler. Just for the information, <laughs> there was 91 there yesterday when we started. And now there will be 89 leaving. I, ha I have not counted <laughs> yet. <laughs> but uh, I kind of lost track of how many I've had so far. So on the racetrack right now is the Grand National Hooligans making and their way onto the track. Side note, <laughs> side note, the fastest hooligan uh, was actually very, very quick, would be 12th fastest in the Super Twins, according to our practices yesterday. So we have some quick hooligans here this weekend. And that is Chris Boone, the Grand National Hooligan na, 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 Championship na, na, riders are out there. You're a hooligan. Did you ever hear that song? No. No, okay. Sorry, Scotty. They said they want to give a, I am old. They, they said they <laughs> want to give a big shout out to Roof Systems for helping this uh, this whole series get down here and drag specialties and parts limited saddlement and pro points ooh, ooh. watch out a little sketchy a sean Raggi on the 155 out there just dancing around out there there's the 232 that's trevor quail 84 andrew moreno he's got some good looking leathers on i watched him all week the eight the 12 that's aj that's applejack aj kirkpatrick cole king on the 55 i will give these guys mad props too because when you walk out into the paddock these bikes have Style, And I mean, I tell you, because they are not, <laughs> well, let's go back to that. Just a little sketchy. You can kind of see the rear wheel kick out there. Scotty, is that a braking bump? Is that a rider error? What's going on there for yeah, the I, uh, I totally missed it. I was looking down at my notes. He definitely made a mistake right in the middle of the corner. And I was having my Dr. Pepper right now, so I missed what <laughs> happened. But uh, there's Sean Raggio out front. And you can see the different color number plates too, Kristen. The blues are from the Midwest area. Now, is this, that any relation to the Raggios that we yes, know? Yes, that is, that's Tyler's dad. That's I used, Tyler's dad. I used dad. to race against Sean. You, so, when was that? Oh, I don't know. A long time ago. I'm old. The yellow number plates are the riders from the south. The red number plates are the riders from the east. And the green are from the west coast. So uh, the number nine out there, that is a 99, is Bubba Boswell. The Raggio. nine is Jeffrey Henry. Yeah, Raggio looks Looking good. racy. I mean, he's cutting up. And see, he rode that all week at the Steve Nace AMA All-Star National Flat Track Ser Series races and the Amateur Nationals uh, leading up to this race. There's five days of racing. So he got plenty of seat time. He has his bike dialed in. I wonder what Max Whale is listening to right now. Yeah, what's on his playlist? Something really cool and trendy. No, he's listening to Taylor Swift. Maybe he's listening to us. No, he's listening to Taylor Swift right now. I don't know. <laughs> Purple hair. Wow. Just kidding. No. The new Taylor Swift or old Taylor Swift, Scotty? Old Taylor Swift, for sure. Oh, see, I kind of like the new stuff. All right. She's doing, re like, the, the re-album releases, though, and she's doing, like, some remixes of the old stuff. It's fun to fun to listen to. Raggio at the top spot, 19.294. Sean Raggio, 19.294. There's the four bike just finishing up. That's Alex Childs. That was the only group number one of our super hooligans. Yeah, a lot of super hooligans here this weekend, too, and it is a really fun class to watch. It's actually Grand National so Scotty, Hooligan Championship Series. I keep messing that one up. That's a lot. Grand National Hooligan Champion. Do you know what's also a tongue tire this year? Yes. The Parts Plus Pole. Yeah, I just, I just pulled that pole. up. Parts Plus Pole, which is the fast qualifier mm -hmm. in the AFT singles class. 
get five hundred dollars, and the fastest qualifier in the Mission Super Twins gets. And $500. that's a good deal because end of the season, like walking away with just about six k. Let's do it. Let's you want to sign up? <laughs> this, C- <laughs> you know what? Fast qualifier. I would gladly do a little moto. I was actually riding fifties out with my niece the other day behind my yeah. brother's building, but this that. scares the skittles out of me. Why? All you do is turn left. <laughs> all you do is turn left at 180. No thanks. 180. <laughs> I give you. such mad props to all of the all of the people who. It does look easy on TV until you come out and watch it live, and then it until even you look try. Look easy it. on TV. It does to me. All right. Look oh. at that. Look at that. Why aren't we there? Listen, I heard there's a party at the Iron Horse Saloon later, so if me, Ralph, and Scotty dip before the main events, <laughs> we're All out. All right, we no, might leave. Kidding. <laughs> Why so would we want to miss that best exactly. race of the year, opener, uh, season opener here tonight? I'm so excited Group for that. Group 2 is on the racetrack out front. It looks like the 26th. That's my buddy. Saw him all week long. That's Ben Ludlow. He ran up front earlier this week. There's the 16 behind him. That kind of looks like the G and G bike that Corey Texter and uh, Colby Carlisle. Corey Texter raced last year. That Colby Carlisle is on this year. I like. I like the blue and the red, white, and blue yep. theme. Very patriotic. Pretty U.S. Cool. number There's one. There's the 35. That is Super Dave. Dave Kilkenny. Actually helped him out and get down here. It's How'd you do that? Give us some money. Which, by the way, most of these <laughs> riders, y'all, if you go on Facebook and you offer them 20 bucks, fan support is much needed. Yeah. There's a few there's a few guys out here that would glad, <laughs> gladly appreciate the, the fan fundraising. If you don't even have GoFundMe's this year. All right, 359 is moving up into six. Jace Johnson. Fastest on the racetrack. 232 was an earlier one. Here they come. 359 looking for a way through. He's caught up to the 26. That's a triumph out there. Watch out, getting up the inside, going into one. The shorter way around. Here comes the, the number three. A little bit of head shake off the 26. Yeah. A lot of bit of head shake. Big Harley triumph right there behind him. Royal infield out there and a Serena. Speaking of the Royal Enfields, you know, I was talking to Johnny Lewis. They added Ryan Wells to the team this year, two bikes for the Royal Enfields. And the big question that I kind of had for Johnny Lewis in the last two seasons, parts have been hard to find for that Royal Enfield. And I said, you know, a second bike, does that mean you guys have more parts? Is the parts problem solved? And he said, no, but we have a second bike. But that also puts a little bit more pressure on both Johnny and Ryan on those Royal Enfields to preserve the bikes because they just don't have the access to the parts that a lot of these other teams have. I think it's a good move adding Ryan Wells because with one rider trying to develop a bike, a second opinion is so valuable. Absolutely, and especially Ryan Wells, a veteran rider who knows how to set up a bike. Uh, Something Johnny told me, though, there aren't many adjustments you can make on those Royal Enfields, so it in a way puts Ryan Wells in a box that he needed to be in because in years past, he over-adjusted. He was a rider who every lap was making changes, and sometimes for the worst. So to now be on a bike where you are in a box, there is a limited number of adjustments you can make on that Royal Enfield. It might be a good thing for him. Absolutely. There's a 27. They call him TV Dinner. It's Terry Vestal. He's always fast in the hooligan class. 51, Charles Holmes. The winner, the fast time is 155, Sean Raggio. We're going to take our first commercial break. We're here at the World Center of Racing. We'll be right back. And I'm not leaving. VP Racing Fuels. No matter what motorcycle you race or ride, amateur or pro, we have a fuel to make more power. Keep your bike running cool with VP Stay Frosty Coolant, available in two formulas. Race ready, designed to be glycol free and track approved, and high performance with freeze protection for street applications. Visit VPRacingFuels.com to learn more. MobileView has been providing state-of-the-art LED video screens to sporting and special events throughout the U.S. and Canada since 1999. We use our vast experience of thousands of events to help guide the process of finding the right size screen to help make your event a memorable experience for your fans and sponsors. SBS is the official brake sponsor of Progressive American Flat Track. 
your single source of brake components for motorcycles, ATVs, and UTVs in racing, off-road, and for street use. Try the improved brake performance of the all-new SBS Better Brake Series. Find the brake pads, rotors, and clutch kits that match your bike on sbsbrakes.com. There's a reason why SBS is the preferred choice of street kings and race champions alike. Go ahead. Once again, for the 2023 season, all progressive American flat track classes are running the race-proven DT4 tire from Dunlop. Designed for pro and amateur riders alike, the DT4 has multiple compound options, an aggressive tread pattern, and can be run tubeless for greater overall performance. Dunlop, the official tire of progressive American flat track. Brought to you by Yamaha. On the track, on the trail, or out on the open road. Check out Yamaha's full line of class-defining, adventure-seeking motorcycles, ATVs, and side-by-side -side vehicles at YamahaMotorsports.com. Progressive is proud to be America's number one motorcycle insurer, protecting one out of every three insured riders. And they also offer coverage for your boat, RV, and other adventure vehicles. Quote motorcycle insurance online in as little as three minutes or bundle your insurance together today. When you think of a ride, you think of quality. When it comes to hitting the ground and, and protecting your head, I wouldn't wear anything else. The design of it is round and smooth, so when you're rolling through the dirt, your helmet doesn't catch the dirt and hurt your neck. Safety in flat track and motorsports in general is probably the biggest concern. Obviously, we're all here to win. At the end of the day, we're all concerned about our well-being, and for that, you want to have the, the best gear on it, you know? And for me, a ride is the best choice. Hi everybody, welcome back to Daytona. Daytona Beach, Florida. Bike Week is underway. Prof Shaheen here with you as we get back into our next round of practice sessions. Scotty Dubler and Kristen Beat have stepped out for just a minute and we're gonna talk our way through this next session here as we're on board with the three bike. We've got the man who owns that machine sitting right next to me here is Briar Bauman works his way around the racetrack. Joining me in the booth, Rick Ware. Rick, welcome to the Progressive American Flat Track. There we go. Now we can hear you. Thank you, man. It's so great to be here. It's exciting. Uh, you know, Daytona is the, the place for speed, and uh, we just got something more to do now. Well, you've already been involved with quite a bit of racing this season here at Daytona. You were part of the Rolex 24 Hours here at Daytona with your LMP2 team. Then you had two cars running in the Daytona 500 as well. Now this weekend, not only are you racing here, but just down the road, you're over Gainesville at the Gator Nationals with Clay Milliken running in the top fuel category. You're a busy guy. <laughs> yeah, we're busy. Or we're blessed to be able to do what we'd love to do. And uh, it's uh, it's exciting. It's, and there's so much great racing going on in the state of Florida. We race a lot in Florida. So it's just great to be here. And, and again, the, the opening uh, the opening of the season to be here at Daytona, I'm used to everything great starting at Daytona. So it's great to be here with AFT. And, you know, we're just excited to be part of the pro program. Yeah, you also were down here running at St. Pete just, what, last weekend with the IndyCar Tour over there. And then you've already laid claim to the 250 championship in World Supercross in 2022, getting ready for that season to start up again in July of this year in Birmingham, England. So I guess the better question is, what are you not a part of these days? Well, I think we're, we're I think we've open the doors of every place we want to be and so we're just going to start focusing on making sure that we continue to have the success that we've had in these other divisions and um, you know just start to grow the brand we're really trying to um, expand some of our sponsors and their opportunities uh, and, and you know two wheel gives you a little bit of a different advantage to bring in some you know new companies new markets but uh, you know right now we need to keep track of the companies that we have and just uh, be part of this great racing so we see briar sitting forth there right now you also have shana texture bauman on your team so you got two riders competing there what was it about progressive american flat track that attracted you to the series well 
first off, to me, it's it's the two-wheel version of short track car racing, right? So I love that. And uh, I was just watching practice with um, Gene McElrath, who won the world championship with us in the Supercross. And we're talking about just the nuances of Supercross guys can, can dive in and make a dive, um, you know, square off, punch somebody out, and then and take off. This reminds me so much of car racing in that you have to kind of slowly work up to it. And if you make a little bit of a mistake, it takes a lap or two to get it back. So I, I see a lot of nuances there uh, similar to that. Um, but as far as actually coming in from a team standpoint, it, we, I had looked at that, uh, you know, probably a couple of years ago. Uh, at the time, the timing wasn't right because of where I was at, the riders that, that were available. Because, um, again, uh, on two wheels, the, the rider is very important. Um, so this kind of came about in the last eight months. And, that you know, the fact that, um, you know, that FS1 coming on board, um, AFT is really starting to grow. And, and you, can, you can feel the energy. And selfishly, I want me and my sponsors to be part of that now instead of two years from now. Speaking of sponsors, you brought some new ones with you into American Flat Track this year. Tell us a little bit about the relationship with Part Plus and Pronto. So Parts Plus, is uh, we have a three-year deal with Parts Plus on our top fuel car. We have Clay Milliken here tonight. Uh, Parts Plus and Pronto are also doing a pole award. So Clay is going to hand out the big check and the money to some of these hot shoes that are going to be the fastest uh, in qualifying. So, you know, we're just um, taking some of these companies and expanding. They've uh, worked with us like anybody else. We're, we're trying to get different scenarios. Um, the more that we can do for them, uh, the more we're going to grow. Um, we've been fortunate enough to have a good relationship, and we've been able to deliver. And, um, you know, but we also have uh, Jacobs and um, Biohaven, which is our parent company for NerdTech that's been with us for several years. So, um, you know, part of our job is to keep the sponsors we have and to keep giving them more for what they're spending. Well, what I love is you're not just coming in and bringing a team, but you're actually bringing money in for everybody else with that poll award. You're actually, is it $500 per class for the poll award each night? Yes, for the 450 and the Super Twin, it's 500 each. Um, you know, I, I think I kind of push to make that happen because, in my opinion, the 450 um, is still a professional class. It's just a different type of bike, and obviously the manufacturers are involved. So um, that's what they wanted to do. And, um, you know, it's just one of the many things that um, – uh, opportunities, I think, that are involved with a, with a series like this. And um, it's really kind of separate for me. I just opened up the doors to make some things happen, and um, they trust uh, our opinion on the value and return. And, you know, we got 18 great races all year long, you know, on short tracks, uh, TTs. And, you know, I, I'm really excited to get to the miles because, again, that's the two-wheel version of our Speedway stuff. To, you know, to see see guys get in the line 10 deep and, you know, fan out at a buck 40 is so cool. Watching Johnny Lewis here through this session. Johnny right now sitting fifth with an 18.916. And that 500 bucks, it might not sound like a ton of money to everybody, but 500 bucks can make a big difference in a racer's pocket each week. Absolutely. It's, uh, you know, they're heading to Sonoa, Georgia next. And from there, I think they're heading out to Phoenix. And, you know, it's um, these guys are trying to get to the elite. They're trying to get rides with different teams. And in the meantime, they're trying to get from, from A to B. Every bit of it helps. And from a racer standpoint, because I've been there, it, it's cool to hang the big checkup in the garage when you're working all night at 2 o'clock in the morning and to get the, the pole award cap. That just kind of reminds you that um, it can be done and it gets you that fuel to get to that next race. Speaking of working at 2 a.m. in the morning, your crew has been doing that quite a bit. You guys just got your bikes, <laughs> just got your box, man. I mean, this all came together in a matter of days. Yeah, it, uh, I, it, we were. I was driving out to Thermal Club for uh, the IndyCar test, and I got a hold of uh, Jamie at Twisted Performance. The guy did our motors for the Supercross, and I said, "Hey, I, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna do this deal, and I, I'm gonna need some help." So, you know, we 30 days ago, we went and bought a box van. I went and got four 450s. Um, we we built motors in the West Coast. We overnighted them and in, in, in coolers back to to, to Florida. It, it has been all hands on deck to make it happen you know everything from you know at our level it's no different than than when i used to race with my dad like all these guys that are racing with their family we all have to, to kind of fight to get the same things done but yeah it's been about a 40 day process of doing it from ground zero and there's a crew right there going to work at it and briar of course having to download a lot of data right now from his brain because this is, they're just getting started on this. They, I, from talking to your guy, Scotty Taylor is telling me he literally got on the bike just once and rode it up and down the street out behind the shop, and that's all he's been on until 
basically yesterday. Yeah, no matter, again, it, it's so similar to so other series and that our plan was to have tested it two or three times before we even showed up here. Um, but Dave Zanotti, who's uh, the engineer and crew chief on that, you know, built the bike and it's, um, it, you know, it, it, it's, again, it is all hands on deck and, you know, we're going to, we may struggle a little bit here, right? I mean, you can't go in anybody's backyard and um, take anybody's names and, and head out of town. So, um, you know, we're still going to develop this bike really as we race it and practice it. So we're a little bit behind the eight ball there, but, um, you know, in a rider like Briar and, you know, crew chief like Dave, you know, we, it, we're going to be competitive this year and that's the important part, but it's, you know, we have uphill battles just like every other person there that's uh, lined up down the road from us. Probably doing a little engine Diagnostic oh, breakdown right, right there. Now. Well, it's you know there's a lot to be a lot to be said to the mapping of these. You know, anytime you have electronic fuel injection, I don't care if it's on a, a prototype or an any car or stock car or a motorcycle. There's a, a whole other facet of of tuning. Um, not just about horsepower, it's about drivability, and the riders need to be able to feel comfortable in traffic and be able to roll on the throttle. So it's it um, you know every facet of motorsports just kind of gets to that next level every single year. So what's the realistic expectation for this part of your program this year? So, you know, you know, NASCAR is kind of the 800 pound gorilla. It's very tough to be competitive there. We, we struggle to, to get to that next level every single year. Uh, we're Cause it's of, cubic dollars, cubic dollars. Um, w- when we do programs like this, um, they have to benefit the sponsor and we have to be competitive. Our, our goal is to win races to, to, to say, well, we're going to go win a championship, that would be, I think, a little bit, um, uh, assuming a little bit too much. But uh, we, I, I plan to be relevant, and we better be relevant. We're, we're putting in court, uh, uh, you know, putting across the effort to do it. So our goal is to first get on a podium, and then if we get on the podium, we can go for a win. Um, it's going to be really tough tonight, you know, with a brand new bike. But um, you know, with, with you know Shane's history and Briars, you know, over the course of the season, you know, we will be, uh, we'll, we we will be there. Well, you did it with World Supercross show up the first year and we'll take the 250 title with Shane. Yep. Yeah. Well, you know that was very similar in that um, you know that came out <laughs> came up, came about pretty quickly. It was a it was a year ago here in a couple of weekends at at uh, um, Long Beach Grand Prix. We first talked about it, and then yep. we talked some more. And again, if I uh, was able to get all the people to put together, you know, I feel good about the ability of being able to start teams and 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 get people. Um, uh, to make things happen, but it is getting tougher and tougher to get quality people. Uh, first off, because if they're really, really good, you're they're probably not available, right? Especially at the last minute. Um, but uh, I got Dave Analak, who I teamed up with in uh, Arena Cross 10 years earlier, kind of pulled him out of retirement and said, hey, I know you don't want to do too much, but I'm thinking about racing all over the world with a, with a motocross bike. What do you think? <laughs> He's like, man. <laughs> so, you know, we put it together very similar to this. And, um, uh, again, the key is we get, we had a couple of really good riders. Uh, we got some good mechanics and, um, we're going to try to duplicate that kind of program here with the flat track. And, and we did it in Supercross. You know, we've, uh, uh Joyce Avachi got hurt a couple of weeks ago at, um, Dallas and, uh, but we are, I think it, we finished ninth or eighth or ninth, every single race all year long. And, uh, you know, we're beating a lot of the factory guys. And so we're trying to keep that nucleus of, of how we put things together going, you know, we see racers all the time talking about how hard it is to find sponsorship to go do one series, let alone half a dozen like you're doing. So how do you do it? How are you selling all of this to everybody? Cause I don't remember seeing you winning a billion dollar lottery. No. Um, I, I mean, if I did, I'd probably really try something stupid, but you know, <laughs> but no, I have it. Um, I, I think, you know, getting the sponsor is one thing. I think it's really, uh, tougher to keep the sponsor. And that's kind of what I've um, really concentrated on and to make sure if somebody's, if somebody's spending a dollar, obviously they expect $10 in return. So that's kind of what we're trying to do. And every year racing gets more expensive and we keep trying to get more additional budget. And the best way to do that is to um, offer more things and to make sure that whatever you offer um, d- doesn't necessarily always have to be one and two and three times what they're already spending, but to make sure that social media wise, um, uh, marketing wise, they see something every Monday or Tuesday. There, there's, we need to tell a story all the time. If you're running a series that only runs 17 times a year, it's tough to tell that, that story all year long. Um, NASCAR obviously races, you know, 38, 39 times a year. Um, but you know, we, 
we have the ability, again, with these other programs to be very successful, to have a storyline to tell. And it's been important for us to continue to grow those sponsors. Some of them are only one and two and three off sponsors that we've had in the past in the NHRA and in NASCAR. Uh, a lot of these people we've now been able to grow into, hey, you're going to be a primary sponsor, but you're going to be an associate for everything all year long. So maybe we only take a one or two race sponsor, and, and, but, but we double the dollar figure because we're giving them, them the value add. Uh, from there, um, you have to go and subsidize each program. And um, so far, it's been working. I will say it's not just about the dollars. It's a lifestyle, and you have to love to do it, and you have to love racing. Um, you know, we haven't won that many races as far as I'm concerned. I got a lot of races I'd like to win before I ever retire, and there's a lot of people in this motorsports uh, and NASCAR and IndyCar uh, that have won a lot more races than myself. And so I'm a racer, and I just want to keep kind of win some races. So how do you look at American Flat Track and see the ability to do what you're just talking about? What is it that American Flat Track provides the way the series is running and being operated these days that gives you the opportunity to go to these sponsors and say, I can bring you in over here with AFT and give you all of this? Well, the ability to be... Um, let's say, let's use the words relatively competitive. The, the, the ability to say, I'm going to go into a national series that's on FS1, and we're going to be in the top 10. And if we're, we're legitimately in the top 10 on a regular basis, which is feasible to do, we're going to get a lot of television time. Now, if the ratings might not be um, as many eyeballs technically as, let's say, Cup, but we only get on television a handful of times on Cup if we're running at the front or something happens. So uh, the fact that we can regularly be uh, on television and talked about uh, is how you start to build that. It really worked in in NHRA and top fuel. Uh, when you win rounds, it's going to work work here. When we're you know we're running up front and winning heat races, um, and then winning events. That's how you leverage it. So at the end of the day, people like to feel good about their product. Like to feel good about seeing it uh, in, in successful situations, and um, you know winning uh, cures a lot of ailments in, in this world. Yeah, sure does. Here come the singles rolling back out. You talked about the fact that you got Briar and Shayna back here with you, uh, a great pairing. How much was it the fact that you could get the both of them that encouraged you to do this program? Well, it was all about saving that one hotel room all year <laughs> long. <laughs> uh, no, it, uh, well, again, from a marketing standpoint, we've done a lot of things with women in, in motorsports, uh, in NASCAR, both in, in, in drivers and in pit, uh, pit crews, et cetera. Um, the one thing that we've been lacking is it's tough to find uh, competitive females at a certain level in, in upper level motorsports. Well, you know, uh, you have somebody that's the winningest rider in 450 history. Well, it's not like in the female class. That's like in history against yeah, men. Yeah, right, right, right. And so, and I, I think too, her her first ever win actually was beating her husband Briar. So, um, she's the real deal, and that's a very unique element to have to be able to sell. And so that's very important. And then, of course, with the whole aspect throughout the whole year um, of the whole family aspect of, of racing, there, there's a lot of storyline about how you prepare, how you mentally get ready for a race. You have a husband that's racing somewhere different. You're racing in a different class. Um, but you both uh, are treated and, and concentrate on going racing as separate individuals. Uh, last year, she was on the Super. She was on the Twins. Uh, which was a, which was a pretty big bike for a little girl like Shayna. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to her. I was excited when we were able to get her back on the 450s, and you know, on the half mile miles, she's wicked fast. And so, we're working on some really cool motor programs um, for the mile to where to give her some really great opportunities. Well, what I love is you're always thinking outside of the box, not just with entering the series, but what you want to do to activate within the series. And I think that's going to be, I'm sure you've already got some things in store for us throughout the AFT season. Absolutely. Just can't tell us about it just yet? Absolutely. All right. <laughs> Watching the singles here. Max Whale moves to the top just in front of his teammate, Cody Cop. 18-8 to an 18-9. Sun's starting to go down here. It's really interesting to see these guys, how they shift the weight back and forth. They make sure that they get traction. They, they get the, they get the bike hooked up, and then they kind of lean forward, free the tire up, and get it pitched over and turned. The nuances are just so so incredible. 
You're getting right up alongside that wall, it. too. <laughs> Obviously, there's no similarities between really any of the vehicles that your organization is racing, but is there any way that your different teams work together or share information or thoughts? Well, you know, to me, how you go about things really is similar. You know, I, I you know, I raced, I was fortunate to, to race the Astronome and Superdome, late 70s, early 80s in a motorcycle. And the things that I learned and the mistakes that I made in, in racing, I, I kept with me forever because um, the, the, the patience level, the preparation level, the desire to win – or to uh, to have the adversity with with bad luck, bad weekends. Those things are very common in in all all of motorsports, and um, you know we do. Uh, you know our one shop you know houses three of our different programs, and there's a lot of uh, cross pollination of just ideas. Especially and that's in, in Mooresville. That's in Mooresville, and yeah. especially on the marketing side. You know, as far as um, you know, setups obviously not, but you know we we have um, you know we, we have uh, we have a we have a Penske shock. You know, on our uh, uh, super twin that Briar rides, right? Well, we've, you know, I, you know, I've learned to build Pinsky shocks back in 1994, right? So, you know, to some degree, there is a lot of carryover of like, you know, what gets forward bite, you know, you know, rebound and those kind of things. Um, I think just the general overall presence of people that uh, are in racing. Uh, Wally Brown, that works at Joe Gibbs, stopped by. The, you know, he, he runs four or five races a year with his rider. Yeah. And, you know, he, he works for for one of the biggest teams in in NASCAR, and and you know, he loves flat track, just, just like we do. And kind of the reason why we're here. And you know, he stops by the shop, and we don't talk about NASCAR. We talk about flat track racing yeah. and TT racing and stuff. So that shop in Mooresville, North Carolina, for those of you that might not know where Mooresville is, just north of Charlotte, about half an hour. They call it Race City, USA. It is home to majority of the nascar teams but there are numerous other organizations there that run lots of other types of cars you guys now have the dragster out of that shop the two cup teams and the world supercross team where will the flat track team be based out of? so you know when it's on the road it, it obviously is working out of the the the, the box van and, and equipment etc but it, it will be based ultimately out of morrisville when it comes back um you know, Shayna, her hometown is in Pennsylvania. They spend a lot of time in Florida. Ultimately, the goal is to get them to spend time in Mooresville and in Florida for a multitude of reasons. You know, we have the ability to, you know, get all the other additional pieces that we have to upgrade this program, whether it be chassis, dynos, et cetera. But Mooresville now, you know, it used to be Indianapolis used to kind of be a hub of all the technology. But now, you know, Penske's moved his World Endurance Championship uh, prototypes there. His IndyCar is there. His, his Cup is there. Um, you know, Liget's there. Um, we have a lot of drag race teams. A lot of, it's just so, it's become a, a melting pot of all of engineers. Uh, the best fabricators in racing in the world there are probably, is a whole is there. Um, so it's, uh, you know, if you're, any any job in motorsports, uh, the bulk of the people are there now. From, yeah. from marketing to engineering to mechanics. You saw Tyler Raggio go down as the checker comes out as well. Tyler was able to get up and get going again. Good to see on the 55. There he is. Yeah, well, we got a question for the truck for you now, Rick. Go ahead, Brad. Go ahead, caller. So is there one track, as you look at the uh, schedule for American Flat Track, that you go, boy, that's one I can't wait to see these guys in action on? No, there's not one because there's actually several. You know, first off, it, you know, date, you know, I love Daytona. So like Daytona, you know, I wanted to be here for this. Um, it's been a long time since I've been to Ventura um, for midgets and sprint cars back in the old CRA yeah. uh, days when I lived in California. Yep. It, beautiful little track, right? I'm excited to go there. Um, you know, Sacramento Mile. I've already planned. I've already planned out how just I'm going to get the U.S. Nationals is September first, second, third. We're racing on Monday. Yep. But it, it's a double it's a double header at DeCoin. Yep. Season finale. So I'm figuring out how to make sure I'm Springfield. there. Springfield. Yep. It, um, uh, you know, hopefully being in contention for a championship. Yep. But being there on the mile for the double header, getting back to um, uh, to the U.S. Nationals. And there's a couple others. Um, you know, uh, unfortunately, I can't get as many as I'd like. Uh, you know, being a motorcycle guy, never been to Sturgis. I mean, how cool. I mean, to go see our team race and be there for the Sturgis Bike Week would just be awesome. It is incredible. So it's, um, 
Uh, Speaking of incredible, look at Shane again right up in the mix here. <laughs> She is so fun to watch race on these singles. She is just such a master on that bike. Well, I think I think it's what five years old. She's been doing going around yeah. circles. Shane up here on the sitting. Oh, there she jumps up to 19th right now. Yeah, we'll the 19107. Yeah, you get that picked up a little bit. How much of an active role will you take in uh, communicating with American Flat Track? Obviously, you're exposed to numerous sanctioning bodies, NASCAR, NHRA, IMSA, World Supercross, so forth and so on. And you see a lot of good and a lot of bad that's being done out there in the racing world by sanctioning bodies around the globe. How much will you try to take an active role in trying to share thoughts and ideas? Well, I think a, a fairly active. You know, we've been, been hands-on in, in putting together some of the programs that we've we tried to help implement here at the start of the season. And, um, you know, with only so much time in a day, uh, but I think about this 24-7, and, you know, it's... Um, I guess I, you know, as a joke, I'm always kind of an idea guy, and 80% of them people roll their eyes. But you know, I'm always thinking about ways to either make something bigger, better, faster, um, to enhance the experience at races. And I'm fortunate enough to see, you know, what's really great about every single series we're involved in. And in every series, there's there may be some some negatives, but overall, with the state of the union, I feel like motorsports is in a really good spot. And um, I think motorcycle racing is in a really good spot to to kind of get in the draft of how strong the, the car world is doing, and um, obviously you know with the support of, of of you know NASCAR and France you know just loving this series um, you know there's, there's just so many great opportunities but I, I think it's I think there are a lot of things there and I think um, there's just going to be more sponsors not necessarily from us but there's going to be more sponsors more interest um, you know it, it, you know just it, every single race. Obviously, you mix with some pretty powerful guys in the racing world, too, globally. You hang out with the Rick Hendricks and Roger Penske's and Chip Ganassi's of the world, if not socially, at least on pit road every now and then. How many of them are talking to you about, hey, what's this American flat track thing you're doing over here? What's that all about? Well, I haven't um, had a chance to talk with many of those guys recently, but uh, several other guys, you know, not quite maybe at that level. Um they're interested from the standpoint of their racers. You know, um, most of the guys in the in NASCAR, uh, when we're stuck in buses or wherever, on Friday night they watch NHRA qualifying, and on Saturday they watch Supercross. And with, with the with schedule of of rebroadcast here, they watch what's going on here. So they're, they're, when I run into them at, at Daytona, I ran into several people. Didn't care anything about any new program went going on in NASCAR. They wanted to know about what the motorcycle program was. And at a particular time, I couldn't really say anything about this. So this was really, really new to everybody because what I didn't want to do was talk about it too soon and have any piece of the puzzle fall together because then you kind of look like an idiot. Um, and I do that enough on my own as it is. So <laughs> I needed to make sure I kind of hedged myself. So we didn't even make an announcement until last week, even though we were behind the scenes really moving forward. But, um, you know, it's uh, I think they get it. A great little story. Uh, I got happy to sit, be sitting next to Penske last uh, May uh, during uh, the, uh, the the Indy week. And we were watching both of our cars uh, at Texas in the all star race. And we we're just talking about just different racing and things. And and I asked him what, you know, what his favorite source of racing was. And, you know, that guy's been racing everything, too, for his whole life. And coming to Roger Penske, it was so great to hear this. He, he said, if there's a race somewhere, I just want to race it, you know. And I thought that was really cool. As a captain of industry, he just wants to race it. And, and I don't say that like there's any correlation to me and Roger Penske, but the mindset is the same, is that he is a hardcore racer. Uh, and so am I, but just at a little bit different level. Well, I guess that raises the question of when is too much too much? Have you? Is there a point where you max out the operation and your people, or can you just – Add another layer and give them another building. Um, do not get my wife on this episode. <laughs> okay, don't ask Lisa. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, so 
we're 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 capped out right now. I mean, you know, um, we we have got to keep growing a couple of our pieces. Um, we need to make sure that everything that we have right now continues to be the success that we're at. Well, Logan Eisenhardt right here on this 166, he's a rookie with us this year. He might be, if he's running the way he is right now with an 18.5, he might be the guy taking home that $500 Man, way Pronto to go, Pole Logan. Award check <laughs> a little later on today. Yeah, I don't think anybody's gotten in but the mid-low 50s. I don't think anybody's been in the fours, uh, 40s uh, all day. No, that's it, 18.545. Well, I think so. On the singles. I think Logan Eisenhardt just uh, made himself some money, got a hat and a big check. Yeah, well, well, we'll see if he well, can yeah, duplicate yeah, that yeah, here. Right. Yeah, <laughs> You got to get all the way through qualifying, but he's well on his well, he well on his way here. That eighteen five four five, that'd be pretty strong. It's fantastic. All right. <laughs> More bikes rolling out. I believe these are our hooligans coming up next. So we left, uh, my parents got, got divorced and we moved to Texas in 75 or six. And I remember going to the Astrodome in the mid seventies, they had the flat tracks and the yep. TT in the Astrodome. It was the coolest thing. I saw one of the bull tacos on display here and that whole era of bike was just so cool. Who was your guy back then? Well, Kenny, so, like everybody else. Well, yes, yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's hard it's, not it, to be. It's hard to say not Kenny, but I will tell you what. What, what put it over the edge is um, um, uh, Joy Saldana, um, Gene Romero. Those guys were just, you know, at the time I was so young that I thought they were older guys. And then as I got older and learned more about them, and they're in their mid twenties, traveling in a van. Listening to eight tracks, racing motocross, basically motorcycles all over the world, and uh, and especially here in the states for you know all the flat track stuff. But I remember um, uh, just uh, when when that really got spotlighted in on any Sunday when they followed Mert Lawwell, right? Yeah, right, sure. And just it was just awesome. So now I know you you've raced dirt bikes yourself. You got into the moto scene quite. A bit. Have you ever raced flat track? Which raises the question of you've got all these machines laying around. How often do you grab the keys and jump into one of these things yourself and go for a run? Well, you know, I, I've had some pretty serious uh, neck and uh, 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 spinal related injuries to where it's kind of limited me a little bit of, of what I can potentially do. But I will tell you, we were running uh, the motocross. This has been years ago on the Supercross in 2007 and 8. We built a bunch of uh, bikes um, for some of the guys on the teams and stuff. And we did our own little uh, flat track stuff and I really enjoyed it just because uh, I was too old to be jumping right and, yeah uh, but I love the aspect of being able to, to bury a bike into a corner get it in a two-wheel drift so I, I will say that um, uh, I've always liked that and I grew up in Costa Mesa I remember walking down to Costa Mesa fairgrounds and watching the speedway bikes which oh, yeah. I loved you know they, they only ran four laps right at, at the time but yep I love that because quick action it, it, it was the oval track version of drag racing. Yep. Very fast, very quick, and then a new race comes. Trevor Quayle was the rider we saw go down on the 232. He's nine, let's see, 19.475, third on the chart right now. He's up and going again. That's the 55 right there, Kale King. 19.515, Kale sits fifth. Checker flag waves. And this session is over. Day moving along pretty fast here today so far. <laughs> yeah. How was everything over in uh, Gainesville? Pretty good. We uh, had a good test last week, a uh, good two days of testing. Yesterday we were testing. The track had kind of gone away. Um, it, it, we you know, probably had about a third of the teams there, and most everybody were blowing the tires off. You know, right at the hit of the throttle, a couple of them, a couple of them made um, two thirds or maybe a couple full passes, uh, but not a lot of speed there. Just with the, the the track and the temperature, they're prepping, spraying, and dragging that, getting yeah. ready for. Um, That's uh, the terms: dragging and spraying. Dragging and spraying, baby. Dragging and spraying, dragging the yeah. tires and spraying the sticky That's stuff. Right. Yeah. So it's going to be some. I think it's going to be some pretty big numbers that we'll see here t tomorrow in qualifying, and then um, we're, uh, we we uh, qualified for the uh, top eight. Um, big call out shootout on saturday so we're looking forward to that. i think i think it's going to be gonna be some really fast fast numbers yeah great weekend of racing with all of our fox sports stuff right you got a 
Progressive American Flat Track. We're going to have that on FS1. Drag racing, the NHR will be on yep. FS1 as well, right? Yes. NASCAR from Phoenix, where you'll have your two cars over there on Big Fox this weekend. Probably because you got everything else booked yeah, up with the other I, I stuff, right? I believe so. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I believe so. I don't want to say yes, and then everybody go like, "What are yeah. you talking?" Well, about? it's on one or the other. It's either FS1 or Big Fox, but you'll find it sure on the well Fox, too. Fox family of, of networks. Absolutely. As they say. Yes. Okay. So you haven't climbed in the dragster yet? Um, well, I, I've climbed. I don't fit. But but uh, I can promise you that's been a topic of conversation. I'm trying to work something out right now if I can be like Tony Stewart and c- convince my wife to let me get licensed. That's been a dream of mine, you know, for a long time. Um, yeah, I was talking to Tony about that when when he ran um, a couple of races ago last year and and just some of the nuances that he was having to learn to, just to do that. It's, yeah. it's funny you talk to a guy, literally, you know, he's kind of the AJ40 of our time that has run everything. And, um, but that it, 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 something is short and quick as that is just how it got his attention and just how he went through all that. But yeah, exactly. You get a little twitchy just sitting around with nothing to do, right? <laughs> you yeah. got to get in there and get going. Yeah, and Nitro, I'll say Nitro is a little addicting. It's a lot addicting to stand by and watch it go. It's a lot of nerve wracking. I can't, I, I've had the opportunity to cackle a funny car. Really? I did. Yes. The custom body funny car out of Utica, New York. Buddy of mine, Ross Howard, owns it. The car now exists out of Oklahoma. And I watched that car as a kid, and he owns it. And I ran into him at Amelia Island at the vintage yep. event over there. A couple of years back, he had it there. I couldn't believe the car was there. I was like, why is this car here? And it was part of the 50th anniversary yep. for Gainesville. And he found out I was a fan of the car and knew the Castronova family that owned and operated it. He's like, why don't you come back and sit in it? I'm like, great. He goes, in fact, come back and cackle it for us. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> so I freaked out, ran back. Of course. Did you they, to put the mask in it? That whole thing. Oh, yeah. The whole thing. Yeah. All, you know, it was too small, of course, but yeah. I was getting in oh, it. Oh, yeah. Got it all on, crawled up inside there. And uh, Larry Brown, who raced the Oki Smoker back in the day, yep. funny car, he tuned it all up and got it ready to go. Now, I've been on alcohol before because I've run a sprint car and done yep. all that. So that thing fired up on the alcohol first, and that was like, okay, but I've I've seen that before. (laughs) I've felt that before. And then Larry kind of looked at me, and I saw him reach for the the barrel valve. Yeah, he went to turn that thing on, and it was like, man, you just unleashed the bats of hell. You know, that thing just just went crazy. And the the change in the chassis just sitting in it, I mean, it wasn't even moving. You're just cackling it. (laughs) But the nitro flowing through its body was just incredible. And then they let me give it a couple of wax, you know. Oh, man, what an experience. Just sitting, <laughs> and then they lowered the body down, did the whole thing. It was, uh, it was. Um, there's nothing like it. It is. I've not done that to it. And that was a car from the 70s. So it probably had. Was that a duster? or? It or, was a duster. Yeah, yep. She probably uh, has 2,500, 3,000 horsepower in yep. it. So that's almost one cylinder yeah. of what. Clay yes. Milliken yeah. has now, and what they're about eleven thousand horsepower. Yeah, they, I think they, I think they can't really go monetize it too much past that. But yeah. for sure, every bit of eleven thousand. Every bit of eleven. So I can't even imagine what sitting in eleven thousand just cackling would be like. It's uh, it, it, the, the 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 it's just controlled. It's I tell people they haven't been there. It's just this, it's just beautiful violence. It's yes, just, yeah, I don't it's know a good how. way of putting it. Yeah, it's a good way of putting it. And so is flat track racing in a lot of ways, right? Absolutely. You're going to see a lot of bar banging here tonight as the checker flag waves here. Kale King still number one with the hooligans. The 19.217, 19.217. And getting ready to bring out the Mission Super Twins. There's the man with the number one, Jared Mees, getting ready to go. Prior right next to him. You guys just put all the graphics on there, the parts... Plus graphics just went on what yesterday? Yes, they yeah, were telling me they they, uh, um, they we just painted that. Uh, we were worried about putting the decals on too soon before the paint actually dried. Huh. So we were painting uh, in the last uh, in the last thirty hours. Incredible. So, um, yeah, so we'll be paying the price a little bit till we get her dialed in. But looks uh, really good. I like the I like the color scheme and the layout. It looks fantastic. So you're at two riders right now, one in each category. Are you looking to expand that? I think, I think it would make sense, especially on the 450 side. You know, because if we can get some more factory involvement, we're really thankful for KTM coming on and helping us with some bikes and motors and 
and what they've done to make sure that we could be first class. I think that's going to be a, pro- a byproduct of the manufacturer support. On the single twins, um, it, it's a little bit tougher. The bikes are dramatically more expensive, and there are fewer riders that are capable of riding up front. So unless somebody became available and the program was correct, um, you know, because there's a big question mark about next year. You know, this year the KTMs are allowed to run the 890s yep. with this Duke. I think we're going to a 790 or 800 CC for next year. Um, there's a question about what's going to be uh, the best engine combination. And with the the Super Twins, you know, the, the, you know, that's the old Framer rule where you can build your chassis any any motor as long as it meets the CC and in, in production your, your rules is open. But you know, it's not just you know, it's super twin. It's not necessarily V twin. It could be side by side. There's just so many different yeah, options, yeah, right. and so that that's kind of we need to make sure we know what we're doing with our key program first. So I'm gonna put a little water on the track right now. Yes, yeah, so it's starting to pick up a little bit of a blue groove there. Yeah, which uh, they probably need to get as wide as possible. Otherwise, uh, it'll, be, it'll be easy to start moving people up into the soft stuff, make those passes. Very similar to the old days of racing over at the old Memorial Stadium here in town. Yes. It was yep. very much the same way. You get that blue groove in there and had to get it wide enough. Well, let's go. Uh, while they're working on the track a little bit, let's head down into the paddock area and catch up with Kristen. Hey, Kristen. Hey, Ralph. Hey, Rick. So as they are adding water to the track, what's been happening, and I've noticed this a lot today, even compared to yesterday during the practice sessions, that moist track has not only been faster, but it's also been producing a concrete-like composition that has been sticking to the bikes. Now, you can only faintly see it right now on Jared Mies's bike down here, but uh, it's something that in between motos, they're bringing the bikes back, and they're having to chip it off like concrete. Because of the composition of this track, it's kind of sandy like lima, but it's also got some shells and rocks in it it's honestly becoming all, like concrete and i mean even if you look up towards here you can kind of see the splatters it's not the soft sand that we're used to it's kind of sticky and powdery and guys later on in the night when they don't have the time in between motos to kind of clean these bikes off or even after heats and qualifying this could become a factor for the teams to be able to make sure these bikes stay nice and clean down there and have all the airflow they need yeah, that's all a part of racing here in Daytona. That's exactly what you would see out at the old Memorial Stadium, too. Yep, absolutely. Same type of surface, same type of result. What I what I noticed more than anything, I like the little Formula One tire warmer he's got going on the yeah. front there. Yeah, make sure the thing gets a bite. Yeah, you, you, you know Kenny Tolbert and that group's going to have all the latest things <laughs> that they can use. Yes, we got another call from the truck, I believe. So, Kristen, we noticed you're down there in, in Jared's pit area, and the bikes are fun to play with, but I'm guessing you've spent quite a bit of time playing with that new baby. Absolutely. I made sure to stop by and see Ellie Mae Mies uh, under the mission tent just a few moments ago, and she is so precious, so tiny, so petite. And uh, while Jared Mies is looking for his ninth championship, he is an eight-time champion. He's now a two-time daddy. So welcome to the paddock, Ellie Mae Mies. I know Hayden is excited to be a big sister. Hayden was running around here a minute ago, but uh, definitely exciting to see all of the new faces this spring and uh, Ellie Mae Mies being one of them. Well, listen, you can win all the trophies in the world, but being a two-time dad, that's that's the best title you can ever get, right? Yep, it is. It's, uh, it's, in fact, uh, your son races for you. Yep, yeah, he does. Uh, he had a good run here at uh, Daytona. I think he finished 14th this year. And it's, uh, yeah, the um, kids for sure are a blessing. Or we're definitely uh, thankful for uh, for our boys. And uh, if they're boys that like uh, gasoline or wheels, then it's a curse, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've got my daughter Olivia here with me this weekend. Always exciting to have her along. There's Kenny Tolbert right there. Talk about winning championships. That guy can get it done, Kenny. Yes, sir. It's, some, it's interesting. To see, you know, we have, you have uh, if crew chiefs have been around, you know, from the Larry Max and Suitcake, Suitcase, uh, Suitcase, Suitcase Jakes and, Jake, yeah. and all those guys that, you know, storylines. And, and that's just what we have here, too. It's, it's definitely um, – people that that uh love what they do and they become specialists and it becomes the lifestyle old suitcase jake elder yeah legendary nascar mechanic i've seen that the supercross you know when i was growing up and you know um brock glover 
and and Bob Hanna and you know Keith McCarty used to be their mechanics. Now Keith, you know, is retired now, but he then he headed up the race program and and um, uh, you know Brock is heading over the the Dunlop program on the tire deal. Yeah, it's you know it, it's this is a very addicting sport. Whether it's two wheels, four wheels, it's um, it's hard to replace just the excitement that you get on a regular basis. Well, you find the racers are just racers, right? And they they like everything and. They follow a wide variety of different forms of motorsport. Maybe they don't necessarily compete in a wide variety. Most of them have their one genre that they make is yep. their their thing, but they do follow a lot of other stuff. You do get other racers like Tony uh, Stewart, who you were talking about earlier, who's competed in so many different things, and Jimmy Johnson's been doing that quite a bit, and Jeff Gordon did that, and some other guys. Um, but that was more prevalent back in the 60s and 70s with guys like Mario and AJ and yep. the Unsers and Johnny Rutherford. Johnny Rutherford turning 85 this coming weekend. JR, if you're out there listening, happy birthday. Yeah. We, we parked right next to him uh, at the Indy 500 this past year. And, you know, it's just I remember him driving that yellow Pennzoil car for Jim Hall. The yellow submarine. And, and like, you started talking to him, he's just, like, down to earth and just telling stories and it's like man what a cool dude you know and how many of those guys loved motorcycle race we were talking about the other day about gary nixon when nixon would go to indianapolis to visit and he'd walk through the garage area how many guys in the garage area knew even though they were all indycar people they knew gary nixon and they knew he was a bad man when it came to racing a motorcycle <laughs> hey well so you know you know, racers, you know, do follow everything. So it, it, funny story. So we're, we are at a, I can't remember exactly where it was. Um, I want to say it was U.S. Nationals. Um, Brittany Forrest was just cu- pulling up uh, for qualifying, makes a run, and uh, David Grubnick, her crew chief, right, uh, starts walking towards me. And I, I'm figuring he's walking up to us to ask us about lane choice or something. Big motorcycle fan. Yeah, so uh, he walks up, and I'm like, oh, man, that dude's like, he's the crew chief right now, right? Yep. So now setting all, he got eight of the top top uh, speed records. He walks up, pulls his headphones back. So I'm getting ready. He's all like, dude, I just watched that, that World Supercross. Congratulations. That was amazing. I'm like, you were watching that? He's like, yeah. He's like, man, I love Supercross. Yeah. And so, yeah. you know, it, it's just it's just amazing. But, again, racers are racers. And, you know, the off season, you know, you get on the Internet and you're trying to find out what somebody's racing in some other country or something. It's like you just try to absorb all you can. Well, speaking of racers, let's hear from yours. He's standing by with Kristen. Briar Bauman, the two-time champion in the Super Twins class. Briar, making this transition to the KTM, trusting this team, putting all, your all chips on the table for this one. Uh, a big gamble this off season, but already paying off yesterday in the practice sessions. Every single session you guys were improving. Yeah, it's so new for me, my team, Dave Zanotti, Michelle DeSalvo, and now we have Rick and all of his partners coming on board, and it's just a new motorcycle, right? We've been with Indian Motorcycle for four years, four and a half really, and totally different, but it's a challenge we're ready for. I think Rick's ready for, Dave and Michelle are ready for, and it's kind of a breath of fresh air for us, ideally for the sport, kind of get me dicey on a different brand and, and just try and help things look, uh, or move, look forward, move forward, and, and, you know, ideally race towards the front. And there are some competitive advantages and disadvantages to having both the 790 and the 890 at your disposal. What are you learning here this weekend with that? I've been learning that the 890 is pretty gnarly. Uh, it's <laughs> taken a lot, and it's taken a lot from me and the team, but we're getting there. So I'm going to head back out and try it out. And speaking of champions, we're going to turn this way. Brian, just follow me. We also have the World Supercross 250 champion, Shane McElrath, here with us. Uh, a few moments ago, we were talking about how much fun it would be to learn how to flat track to get out there. Uh, what are you making of this entire flat track experience? Uh, I'm just taking it all in. And really just watch it, watching those guys out there, it, it's, it seems a little bit similar to Moto for a few things that we have to do. But um, I got some questions for Briar later. So uh, maybe I can maybe I can train a little bit and uh, it, it's just cool to be out here this is my first time and getting to see I know I know it's a small level but for me this is cool so I'm, I'm having a good time out here and you know all about athlete mentality the psychology of a season opener what kind of emotions do you usually experience at a one um, a little bit of everything you're 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 pretty anxious you're pretty nervous um, you're trying you're trying to focus on yourself but it's like there's so many emotions going through your head that it's hard to kind of 
think about one thing because it's just what if, what if, what if. But um, today it's just like, you know what, focus on yourself, like take deep breaths. And it's uh, it's it's hard to do, but that's what uh, off-season prep really helps helps teach you that so that when you get here, it's, it's natural. Shane, thanks so much. And uh, guys, we may be seeing Shane on a flat track bike not too long from now. He wants to learn how to get out there and do his thing. And uh, we'll also be able to catch him at the World Supercross Series this summer on FS1. Yep, that'll be July 1st in uh, Aston Villa in Birmingham, England, the first race of the year. British Grand Prix. That, yeah, it's going to be great. You'll see that on FS1. All right, looks like we got bikes rolling out, getting ready to go again. Should be our mission super twins. Here we go. All right, let's go. Qualifying underway here. 890 cc's on dirt, sliding sideways. It's like, that's just a lot of bike. It is a lot of bike. <laughs> it is a lot of bike. Everybody going for that $500 Pronto Pole Award. lap or two to get some uh, times down and we'll see where we're at. Sammy Albert right there on the 69 is Dallas Daniels at the top right now. Then it switches to J.D. Beach with a 19 195. Davis Fisher second, Colby Carlisle, Bronson Bauman, Sammy Albert, Dallas Daniels the sixth, Brandon Robinson, Jared Vandekoy, Cameron Smith, Jared Meese, your top 10. Briar Bauman now moves to number one. And then he gets bumped by Dallas Daniels with a 19.033. So we're on the verge of an 18 second lap. There it is, Dan Bromley, 18.985. Try to put his clasp on that $500 check. Dallas Daniels, 18.795, number one now. And Robinson with an 18.850 moves into second. How about Breyer there at third? That's going to make you pretty happy. Yeah, I think, um, you know, <laughs> for everything we've been facing, that would be e even be in the ballpark right now uh, gives us some hope. He's number one with an 18.738. I think the uh, next lap or two, there's going to be some heat in the tires, and they're going to find that the blue groove, I think the next lap or two is probably going to be the fastest lap. And don't forget Dan Bromley running both categories here this weekend. White flag is out. He Fire it, lowers you. it to an 18.636. Got a little wide there. Hopefully that might be enough. Let's see. Working the final lap. Daniels right on his heels as they come down into the corner. Working their way to the checkers. Who's going to get the top spot? Here comes Breyer right up along the wall. He does not improve. No, nor does Daniels. Fisher does, but not enough. Bauman, 18.636. Looks like your own rider might be getting into your pocket. Well, yeah. It, uh, fortunately, it's not mine. It's uh, Pronto on Parts Plus. But, yes, I'm very happy for him. And I, I figured that last lap, um, I've just seen it so much. You know, the, the uh, when they were heating up the tire when we were talking earlier, it, it's so important just to get that little bite to get, the, to get it to turn in. And um, that was going to happen on the last lap. Uh, I will say, though, that Dallas looks like he had a really good lap. Then um, probably the fact that uh, Breyer kind of slipped up a little bit might have affected him a little bit because you're only talking about a hundredth of a second. But, Look uh, hey, we'll, we'll take it, man. Man. 18636 and 18637. We are in store for some great racing here. Tonight. Oh, yeah. Fantastic racing tonight. Thousandth of a second separating the two. Second half of the Super Twins coming out for their qualifying session. Johnny Lewis on that number 10, the Royal Enfield. That right is an impressive program. It's an air-cooled, um, the, 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 the engineering into that, the, uh, the whole rear swing arm, Looks very similar to if you've look, looked at how they engineer like a, uh, a seat on an airplane that's been machined down very thin, but but it's hollow. It, it's a good shot right there. Very unique the way this bike is built. Yeah, and we're going to see the Build Train Race Program back again this year, too. The ladies will be back racing with us 
a handful of times throughout the season. Of course, you can always go to Johnny's slide school to learn how to do it yourself <laughs> if you want. I went to Johnny Bravo's to learn how to do my hair, but I don't know about the slide school. <laughs> Johnny Bravo, that's great. Let's see. Lowry up to 13th. Johnny Lewis is at 4th. Colkman moves up to 5th. I thought Johnny Lewis might be a player here this weekend, and it looks like he's going to be. He's going to qualify well. Watching Mikey Rush. Look at there from six, 18, seven, eight, five, Bromley. You're still in the 18 eights, 18 eights, all the way to 12th, 13th to 18th night. This is going to be a fantastic race tonight. Oh yeah. I think it's going to be. Uh, it's going to be. Uh, it's going to help to for sure be on the front row because it's gonna be easy to get pushed up out of the groove. Yep. If you get pushed up out of the groove, you're probably gonna go back three or four spots. Quite a bit, real quick. Kinda of like Martinsville, maybe. Yeah, and it's gonna be hard to wedge your way back down in there, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, absolutely. Here comes Johnny. Oh yeah. Picking up the front wheel, keeping her off the wall, and he'll slot in at fourth. That's pretty Let's impressive. go back down to Kristen. Just a moment ago, I checked in with Colby Carlisle and I asked him about this track because we've been hearing so many different things in the paddock and a lot of riders have said that because of the way the track is trending, it's faster each session and that's a disadvantage to some of our fastest riders who have been out on track first. That's why we're seeing so many rookies qualify so well here. At least that's according to Colby Carlisle. It's an interesting thought. Singles getting ready to go now. Parts Unlimited single series. And that, that's a good point, that if that track is getting quicker and you're going later on, well, it's just like cloud comes over just when your qualifying Absolutely. session comes up, right? Absolutely. And here I'm going to say the benefit is, even if you're in single file, if the blue groove is getting getting warmer and the rubber is getting laid down, it's going to be dramatically quicker. Cody Kopp was really interesting in practice. And right there, he has a very unique way of sitting up on the bike, uh, picking his leg up early, and kind of being right in the middle of the bike uh, weight-wise, and then slowly leaning back as he accelerates out of the corner. It's definitely a little bit different than what a lot of people do. <laughs> Can't argue it doing it. And put that number one plate on yeah. the front, right? Yeah. I think that's one of the things that's so spectacular about this form of racing is that individual rider style. You find one that as a fan you just connect with and you go, man, yep. I just love the way that guy or gal rides that bike. Absolutely. Yeah, right now he's got three tenths on the next, yeah. on the next bike. Putting a real grip on that $500 check from... Whew. Pronto Parts Plus. Yeah. 18.087. Dalton Godier, the 79. My guess is he's going to have a couple of those $500 checks before the end of the year. Yeah. This field has got some real talent in it. And they're so young, too. So oh, they're yeah. just going to continue to hone their craft. Not many in this group afraid to hold that thing wide open. Trent Lowe, he's another one. And Roos Evans behind him on the 26. Trent's uh, taking a 10th off. He's down to an 18-2. He's still a little bit of a ways away from Cody Kopp here. White flag is out. Trent will get one more lap at it. Bruner. Lowers this time to an 18.444. Here comes Trent. Checkers await. And he's in with an 18.2. So it looks like Cody Kopp for now with an 18.087.
Well, Rick, I know you got a lot to do before we get to racing here tonight, so we're going to turn you loose. Thanks for coming by, buddy. Man. Welcome to the Progressive American Flat Track Championship. Thank Great you to very have much. you here. Happy to be here. and just uh, You're going to be seeing me around, and uh, I think uh, everybody out there in TV land is getting ready for a show all yeah, year long. We look forward tonight. to having you here. And when you get to Springfield and you're going from Springfield to Indy, the U.S. National Save Me a Seat, I'll go with you. Man, it sounds good. All right. All right, you guys Rick have a great Ware, night. Rick Ware, the newest face in the American flat track paddock. Get used to him. He's going to be a part of this series for a long time. Thanks for coming by, and we'll see you a little later. Thank you, guys. Okay. Let's get back to the track. We'll let Scotty make his way back in here. Here comes Mr. Dubler. Yeah, I'll take a water, please. Thank you, Scotty. If anybody out there would like a Dr. Pepper, we've got about 9,500 of them in here for Scotty. Plenty to go around. Make that 9,499 because you just put one in here. Oh, look at this. Oh, yeah, baby. You're welcome. Can we get a shot in the booth, please? <laughs> this right here right here can you see that that might have to unpackage that thing yeah let's get it open here all right merry christmas thank you well, cody cop at the top spot one I, eight point i take it you ran it's, into gene i i did see gene earlier but actually terry gave those for me and for you so it so is. this is a coin for the hot shoe hall of fame because as it says on the back scotty and i are both inductees of the hot shoe hall of fame for our broadcasting Days here with motorcycle racing. Congratulations, exactly. hey, sir. Thanks. You too. Wow, that is awesome. Thank you, Gene. They're here, though. Gene is here yes. with some buddies, and saw also him Terry's here. Terry, gosh, that is really cool. What an honor. Now that's Thank you for bringing that, Scotty. No problem. Cody Cop at the top spot, 18.082. This guy right here, 82, has been fast all day long. Travis Petten, a West Coast rider. He's up there currently sixth in this Round did did you get to see the Super Twins qualifying? I was out there watching it. Yeah. The gap between closely. one and two. Did you happen to notice? I did it on not the see board? that. I couldn't see Thousandth it. Thousandth of a second. And that's between uh, Bre Daniels Breyer. and uh, Breyer, Breyer Bauman. Bauman. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. That's what that's what short track racing is all about. It's really really close. Thousandth of a second. And the rest of the field is just a couple of tenths after that. It's already the second round of qualifying for the singles class. Cody Cop at the top spot here in this round, 18.087. Checker flag is out. There's a big group of riders. Some of them won't even race tonight, Ralph. Oh, I know. Such a deep field. 44 riders entered. Only 32 will make it to the night show. Reminds me of the days when I came down here in the 600 class back then. Mm -hmm. Great to have Rick Ware stopping by, huh? I'm so jealous. I mean, it's, it's cool. too bad there wasn't enough room for three chairs. Well, or three micro. We need three microphones. Is really what we need. We could squeeze you in. We just don't. You can sit on Rick's lap. Right? It's cool. It's it's definitely cool to have him in the sport. He's going to bring a lot to the sport. Not just what I like, Scotty. Is not only is he bringing bikes and riders to the sport. He's bringing money, not just to his team with new sponsors that maybe are new to our sport, but he's paying that money forward, putting in five hundred dollars to each class with the Pronto. Hearts Plus Poll Award. That, as you talked about earlier, that 500 bucks, it's a big deal for some of these riders. You think about that, it could be your hotel bill. Especially the singles riders. Oh, yeah. You know, they don't have as big a purse as the Super Twins do, so that 500 bucks is definitely a carrot that all these riders are chasing, and the Poll Award is for the pole setter of the heat races, so that happens yes. early in the day. Yeah. So, you know, some of these guys, as we've seen in the past, can rack up three, four, five, half a dozen poles you know, quick times before the season is over, $500 a pop every time you do that, that becomes significant money real quick. That adds up really fast. Shane and Sexta Bauman, we just had the camera on her. That's the 52. She's currently 22nd right now in this round. Again, the fastest 32 move on to the night program. So, so far, she's in a good spot. Of course, she'd like to get a little bit better. Kristen B actually talked to her earlier, and she's making definitely a lot of different changes to the, the steering of the motorcycle. She wasn't comfortable with it. Of course, they're also making gearing changes to that bike. 
did you find back in the day that you took bigger swings at your setup when it came to short track racing or mile Ooh, racing? Definitely short track racing. I mean, you, you, know, you, you know what you want to start with, but every track is different. So then you know, as the track gets faster, you take a tooth off of the rear sprocket or you, you lower the front end if you want it to turn differently. If there's so many changes you can do, like on a mile, you know what it's going to be like. Most tracks, most mile tracks, you know exactly what they're going to be. So you go back to your old notes. But uh, and it's been a couple of years since we raced here. So yeah. And she's never raced this motorcycle here. So they're just you know taking swings every time they go out there and learning what they can. I think it was awesome on American Flat Track to have that practice day yesterday, not only for the riders, but for the track crew to help figure out how to make this track better for today and tomorrow. And it is a lot better. It's smoother, and according to Maxwell, it's grippier right now. You see, it's getting a little chewed up in spots there, the entrance into one and two here. And it, that's going to happen. some bumps coming in there. Yeah, it's a dirt track, right? It's and, part of the course. And they've also widened the racetrack all the way out to the walls on the front straightaway and the back straightaway. Some of that dirt is new dirt that they have not raced on because there used to be grass up against the wall. Yep. So they've widened it out. So it's, it's like that front straightaway. Look, it's a big arcing front straightaway now. Instead of having a straightaway... You know, they broke that area away, and they're, they're going up and almost bouncing off the wall right about the start-finish line. More of a big circle. Yep, big arcing front straightaway. It's a little bit straighter on that back chute. Cody Cop still in the top spot, 18.087 here in this second round of qualifying. Raymond Rizzo's down there. He's our assistant. Hey, Raymond, hey, we Raymond. see you. Good to see you, sir. Welcome back, friend. He's waving that yellow flag. So first time mm -hmm. they come out, look, Dan Bromley waves at him as well. So Dan is so funny. Dan's going to be a busy guy, isn't he, running both categories? And he's the only one racing in both classes this weekend. So it, he's definitely made a trip down here from Pennsylvania. He's going to get all the track time he needs. Yeah. He actually won an indoor race. They call it Flat Out Friday just a few weeks ago up in Milwaukee yep. and was ripping that day. And that was pretty much the first time they've ridden the brand-new bikes. And he got married in the offseason, and he's, he's got a baby on the way. Jeez. He needs some pull money, doesn't he? Definitely. He is a tall rider, that is for sure. Currently 25th on that very first lap. Sometimes it takes a lap or two to get up to full speed. I know that we say that on the big tracks, but you got to get comfortable out here on these little tracks as well. Got to find your groove, find your rhythm, find your flow, as they would say, right? Yep, exactly. See the back tire bouncing just a little bit, a couple of bumps developing. And short track racing like this should feel very familiar to everybody in the field because this is truly how everybody started. Grassroots, you can't just step into flat track and go race a mile. You have to work your way up to it. So all across the country, there are many short tracks like this. Some of them all obviously have different surfaces, and that's where people start racing first. Sometimes they're indoors, sometimes they're outdoors. But you know, this is a true short track, and this is where the, all the flat track racing starts. Looks a lot like a lot of people's backyards, too, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Go the out in the field and just let's go. The Haydens made a, a beautiful short track at their at their compound. I know Joe yep. Kopp, he made an identical short track to the Springfield short track because that was always on the circuit every year, and that's what he wanted to work on. And they have a replica at their house in Micah, Washington. They just recently moved down here to Ocala, Florida. Can't turn enough laps, can you? A couple of new riders right there. The 112, that's Aiden Brown from Walton, Kentucky. And he's battling with the 117. I'll see him on our list just so. That's Landon Smith. That's that Smith kid. That's what they call him anyway. He's from uh, Pensacola, Florida. He's uh, Dalton Gautier's teammate. That's when you know you're starting to get everybody's attention when they start calling you all oh, that Smith kid, right? Well, they they don't know everything about you, but they know that you're fast. Yeah, that Smith kid. That's what we've used that for quite a while as his amateur days. He moves up to pros. And Logan Eisenhardt takes the 166 all the way to third, and he is a brand-new pro rider from Pennsylvania. He was quick in the uh, earlier session. And he has been fast all week long. Again, the Steve Nace AMA All-Star National Flat Track Series was just down the road, and, and he won a few races and turned some heads down there. Let's go back down to Kristen. And guys, watching Dan Bromley exit the track there, I just cannot wrap my head around the fact he is racing both classes, the Super Twins as well as the singles. Scotty, I mean, that has got to be tough. And Ralph, I, I can't even imagine racing both classes in one day. Yeah, I can't imagine either. I talked to him in the pits. I was like, yeah, and he's going to be tired at the end of the day. And they say, nope, he is fit. He's ready to go. And he... You know, he's ready for two days or two classes of racing in both days. So uh, we'll see how, the, how that works. You know, if he's going to get tired, if he slows down near the end of the day, maybe they'll only run one class tomorrow. But they're here. Their sponsor said, let's run both classes. They're going to pick and choose which events they run this season. 
And that's what they're going to do. We're talking about the 62 of Dan Bromley. Bikes on the racetrack right now. It's the Grand National Hooligan class. They run the Grand National Hooligan Championship Series. They're sponsored by Roof Systems, Drag Specialties, Parts Unlimited, Saddleman Seats and Saddlebags, Pro Plates, Bumpus Harley-Davidson, Boswell Harley-Davidson, and our friends with Light Shoe helping them bring the Grand National Hooligan Championship Series down here to the Daytona Short Track. Daytona Flat Track, they call it. Battle for this spot right here. Looks like Cole King sneaking a peek on the inside. He's got the 55. The 155 is Raggio, but 55 is Cole King. He's a very good rider. He's on a KTM. Andrew Moreno puts the 84 Harley Davidson in the top spot with a 19.200. It's Cole King right here chasing the 232. 232 is Trevor Quayle. They have different colored number plates depending on what part of the country they are from. Alex Childs moves the number four up there to the third position on that last lap by. Looks like the 232's got some company on the back tire. Here comes 55 Cole King from Iowa. No relation to Rich King, who is also a former race winner from Iowa. This is group number one. There's the nine machine kept catching up to Jeffrey Henry on this Harley Davidson. They're gonna stack them up two by two and turn one and two. Raggio's going up the inside, the 155 making a move. He's from Lockford, California, now calls home U Harley, Georgia. Made the move last year actually, but the uh, sign in sheets just now started saying Georgia. Group number one out there on the racetrack. This is actually qualifying round two. Look at Raggio up the inside. This is what short track racing is about. He stuck the front wheel on there and that was impressive by the 232 to shut the door. Trevor Quayle held them off as they come off of that final quarter. The 12 bike out there, that's AJ Kirkpatrick on that last lap. He jumps to fourth position. They call him Applejack, AJ Kirkpatrick, California rider on a KTM. Andrew Moreno, the 84, goes up to the top spot, 19.178 as the hooligans come off the racetrack. They will check in at Tech, and then the next group will roll on out, and we're going right through the qualifying action here today. Daytona Flat Track, round number one of Progressive American Flat Track. One more group to go. What are you doing, Ralph? You're on, you're on the camera. What, are you down there uh, searching for something, Ralph? I mean, just got a lot of stuff going on in oh, here. Okay. You got to get, you know, there's things you need. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kicking Dr. Pepper cans all around. No, I just mixed up a little, uh, okay. we little got... energy here. You all know, right. So this is my energy going. in a can. I know you go for that. Mm -hmm. 23 flavors, all taste like heaven. Group two of the hooligans moving on to the racetrack. There's the 26 Ben Ludlow. On a Triumph. Love on that Triumph, see what he can do. It goes a little bit wide down here. I also noticed as the track was changing earlier when I was outside, they were actually chasing the moisture up the racetrack a little bit. Looks like the fast line's around the bottom right now. That's where the blue groove is starting to form. Listen to that Triumph. 359, Jace Johnson, the second bike on the racetrack, moves into 10th. And just as I say that, Ben Ludlow goes up to seventh. Kurt Patrick still in fourth. Final round of qualifying for our hooligan class. Jace Johnson goes up to third on that lap right there. The fast bike on the track is the 359. He's actually closing on the leader right here on that front straightaway, going into turn number one. Leader slips a little wide. Here comes the three. That's a two five nine. I'm sorry, three five nine. Jace Johnson did not make the pass right there, sliding it in hot into turn number three. Picks his left foot up, gets on that foot peg as soon as he can to put the traction on the rear tire. Leader's holding, or that twenty six is holding down that lot bottom line really well. He's back there in the ninth spot. They're catching up to the 85. That's Anna Serena. You remember Anna the Banana? Of course. She's out there. There she is. Yep. Build Train Race program. Yep. yep. She was out there. White flag is out. She had all the banana fans in the stands yeah. there at Belushi, Belushi at the end yeah. of the season. 
I saw her a couple weeks ago. She gave me a sticker. Well, that's good because I know you collect those. I definitely so do. Got I got, I got another collection. new one today. Where did that one go? You already hit it. Did you take my sticker? I did not. All I right. didn't touch your sticker. All right. Don't touch my coin. <laughs> I put mine away already. Yeah, it's coming. <laughs> Don't make the tree go yeah, back here. Yeah, Dad's coming back here. Yeah. We keep Dad at the front of the truck. All right. So there's 35. Dave Kilkenny taking that checker flag. We look up at our scoring ch chart. Andy Mor Andrew Moreno right there at the top spot in the 84. Cole King gets up to second. Jace Johnson, who's just out there, is third. Yeah. Quick group on the 19 seconds. Harley's triumphs and a couple of Royal Enfields. Everybody in the first... 14 in the 19 second range. And that's going to be a handful. Those bikes are heavy. Oh, yeah. And it's a short, tight little track. I mean, obviously the Super Twins have the same issue, but they're not yeah. quite as heavy. These uh, these Hooligan bikes are super heavy. Yeah, yeah. no doubt about but it. But they're having fun. Well, having a lot of fun. I haven't seen anybody not grinning over there, right? <laughs> I heard we're going to have a sold out crowd here tonight, and it's looking like it tomorrow night, too. Weather's been fantastic down here. Thank you, Ralph. Beautiful. Thank you for making that happen. We appreciate Today, that. I did everything I could, right? Super Twins final round of qualifying onto the racetrack. The three has impressed me the most so far. Brand new bike, and he is qualifying up there near the front almost every time out. He got faster each each session yesterday afternoon as well. There's the green flag. Oh, the front wheel comes up a little bit. He bounces off the front straightaway wall. Dallas Daniels right there in second on the 32. Breyer making the move over to KTM. And they can use the 790 or the 890 Super Duke. And they pretty much have the exact same bolt patterns. They can almost switch those motors out and bolt straight up to almost to the almost identical. Breyer with the 18.391. So the track appears to be slowing down just a little bit as the moisture is going away from the track. But what's good is when we're done with practice and qualifying, they're going to tear it right back up and water it right back down to get ready for today or tonight's program. Here comes the 32. Dallas Daniels up the inside, and just as he does that, the 44 last time by has the new quick time in this second round, 18.277. Daniels second. Breyer third. There goes the 20 bike of Van Decoy. He jumps up to third, now up to second. A little deeper in the field, 69, Sammy Howard currently 10th. He just went across the start finish line. Breyer taking a look over his shoulder. Maybe he wants a little bit of clear racetrack. So it's the 44 followed by the 20 and the 32, your top three. It is really exciting to see Breyer finding his groove early on this it's, year. It's super impressive. I know he's really still got a lot of work to do to dial that bike in exactly the way he wants it. But let's face it, last year was very frustrating for him. He did win. He did have successes. But overall, I think he would tell you it was a very frustrating season his last year on the Indian. Yeah, he's looking to change that up. Yeah, and to come out first race of the year and riding like Briar Bauman that we expect to see when we see Briar entered is really exciting, I think, for the fans to see. Certainly got to be exciting for Rick Ware to know that, you know, you, you put this program together so last minute and you're right in the thick of things. Boy, that's exciting. And a lot of that goes to Dave Zanotti and Without Michelle DeSalvo, doubt. and they're still working out of the SNS uh, garage right now. They're trying to transfer the team down to Morrisville up, you know, in your neck yep. of the woods. But, uh, you know, that will take time. You know, this, this deal just came together recently. Yeah, no doubt about it. And it's going to be a process. But, boy, when you feel like you're already showing some speed, it makes that process a lot easier to deal with, right? It's got to be a very rewarding to see how Breyer's up there near the front of the pack, you know, first round, first couple groups out already. Mikey Rush, did you see him earlier? The bike was just smoking like crazy. So I'm assuming this is the backup motorcycle for the 15. And he's going after the 10 right there of Johnny Lewis. Hundred twentieth anniversary of Harley Davidson. They started in nineteen oh three. It's two thousand and twenty three. What an incredible celebration. I know they've got a lot of activities planned all summer long in Milwaukee and elsewhere. All around the country, you know, Daytona Bike Week here. 
I'm sure there'll be a lot going on when we get to Sturgis later in the summer. Yeah, and Harley Davidson dominated our sport for so long, and and now they're they're trying to claw their way back into it. You know, in this new Super Twins class, and mm -hmm. you know the XR750 no longer really competitive, so uh, rushes on XG750, and he's he's looking pretty racy so, so far. Johnny Lewis back there, 14th. Mikey Rush right behind him in the 15th spot. And there is Johnny's teammate closing up on the 94th, it's Ryan Wells. Now they are 14th and 15th. 98, Kel Kochman. And I think you and I have talked about that in the past. When you look at the overall racing world and you say, you know, what are some of the most famous marks and models within that mark that have dominated racing around the world as we watch Johnny Lewis here breaking loose on the traction wow. and pedaling through it. Really got sideways and then Man, he hits a bump that. and he gets really sideways again. You know, you think of things like the Porsche 911 Chevrolet Corvette Harley Davidson XR 750 they're right there all together, right? Yeah, I mean, they have to be. Yeah. And we uh, talk about overall wins for a particular model of vehicle it's an incredible what the XR750 accomplished over so many years. Almost 50 years of, of dominance, incredible. you know. They didn't dominate every year, but they were up there in the thick of it for sure. As Johnny Lewis goes all the way up to sixth here in this round on that next to last lap. Yeah, it's definitely a, a bike that everybody wants to be like, you know. And then the Indian FCR came along and it started, you know, beating everybody. And now they've kind of evening the playing field with some rule changes in the last couple of seasons. And... Now we have Yamaha winning. You know, we had the Royal Enfield win in production twins class. We got Kawasaki's, Yamaha's, mm -hmm. Harley's, and still still the Indians out there in that super twins class. There you go. Brandon Robinson, 18.277, number one on the board. And that is in the second round of qualifying. They'll put the times together. And, of course, the fast qualifier will pick up an extra $500 in the poll award. Yeah, that Pronto Parts Plus Pole Award. We'll give that away during opening ceremonies. Yeah, we're going to Clay Milliken, NHRA Top Fuel Star, is here to do that. He runs the Parts Plus Colors in the NHRA Top Fuel category. He's got one of those big checks. Yeah. And the specific ball cap. Can we? Oh. Well, wow. the airport is literally right off the back straightaway here at the Big Speedway, and we are just outside of turn number one of the big speedway. There you see the hillside right there and fans along the hillside there. So I love dogs. I know you do. I do. Yep. And I especially love golden retrievers. We have two of those, Kristen Beat and JD Beach, I know has at least six. Now, guys, it may be Daytona Bike Week, but back in Kentucky, uh, J.D. Beach has a whole family at home watching the racing. Uh, how are the dogs doing? They're doing great. Uh, I actually haven't been home for a little while, so I'm looking forward to uh, racing out here. But then uh, no matter if I get first or last, the dogs will be pumped. So uh, I'm lo 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 looking forward to getting back, and they're, uh, they're doing good. I and I know they'll, be, uh, they'll, they'll wa 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 watch the race tonight. So, for those who don't know at home, how many dogs do you have? What are their names? And I think we even have a graphic that we can show. We've got a little uh, Jiggy Dog butt patch this year. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we've got five. They're Ellie, uh, Nash, Fe 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 Phoenix, Gunner, and Co 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 Copper. Uh, all all, go all mm, go mm, go go Golden Retrievers. Uh, and they're they're a lot of fun, but a lot of work. And JD, you actually recently adopted one of your dogs. Which dog did you adopt, and what was that experience like for you? Yeah, so uh, we uh, we ado do uh, adopted one from chi from China, and it was a uh, it it was real it was it was a lot of work, but it was so good. And uh, the whole bat 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 backstory of what those dogs go go mm, go through, and there's a lot of them. Uh, it, it's really sad, and uh, when I was wanting to get a, a new dog, I, I knew uh, 
I knew I wanted to say to 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 say to say 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 mm, say a dog and not buy one, and uh, so it 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 really ma ma makes a dog uh, great, and the, and I think they truly know that like you saved them. A hundred percent. And speaking of saving dogs, we are going to introduce y'all to a dog that you can adopt right down here in Daytona. We have Dollars and he is available at the Halifax Humane Society. All you guys have to do is visit HalifaxHumaneSociety.com or just stop by. It's right down the road. You can meet Dollars and bring him home and he is definitely in need of a home. What a sweetie dollar yeah. looks like, huh? And Kristen actually went down there and met some of these dogs that we're going to be talking about this weekend. She has a huge heart, and she wants every dog, every animal to get adopted and find a new home. And fortunately, she has a huge yard because she adopts a lot of animals, including horses. Right, Kristen? <laughs> yeah, we've got a few of those at home, too. And just a little info on dollars. If you guys are interested or looking to expand your family, maybe adopt a dog down there at the Halifax Humane Society. So just some info back on dollars. Now, Dollars is, they project to be six to seven years old. He has a really friendly disposition. He walks well on a leash. He gets along well with other dogs. And sadly, guys, he has been in the Halifax Humane Society since August of last year, which is so sad when you think about it. That's nowhere for a dog to live. They want to be at home with you. They want to climb up on your lap. They want to have a place to call home. So if you guys want to bring Dollars home, the Halifax Humane Society is literally right down the road. You can walk right in. You can meet the dogs. You can enter interact with them and I met Dollars myself. I am testifying to you. He is a friendly, friendly guy. So the Halifax Humane Society right down the road. The Halifax Humane Society.org is the site that you can go to to see all of the dogs that are available for adoption right now. Guys, they are overcrowded. They have 20 to 30 dogs in that rescue alone right now, all wanting to go home. But Dollars, he's been there since August of last year. He's been there longer than any other dog at the shelter. So if you guys are interested, Halifax Humane Society.org org or just drive on over guys they are open friday saturday all day long go in there meet dollars and hopefully maybe you guys will find them a home hardest part scotty is you just want to take them all right yeah i just i wish i could but i'm, I'm gone so much and there's nobody uh, at my house to take care of them but dollars is a cute dog right there yeah i think you need a, a road buddy yeah that'd be you awesome you drive so many places you yeah. should get dollars to ride in the there truck you with you yeah. Yeah. Springer. Springer had diesel, right? Yeah, he rode everywhere. He even rode on the motorcycle. I with think him. dollars would make a great road buddy. So I just you. need to get a van. And well, you got your truck. You take your truck everywhere. He can send the cab with you. Yeah, and put my put my Super seventy three bicycle in the back and just hit the road. Yeah, that comes with you anyway. They bring can, that on the. Can I use your gas truck? card? What does my gas card have to do with? I mean, I gotta get to the races dollars. somehow. You you have your twenty bucks. You get everywhere you go. No, I I gotta have more than that. Fans making their way in, filling up the grandstand. It's going to be a nice night for racing here. And the open paddock is going on right now from 545 until 645. Opening ceremonies at 7 o'clock here tonight at the first round of the 23 Progressive American Flat Track season. We're going to take a look back at some racing from Volusia after this commercial break. So enjoy the open paddock area, and we'll be back on the racetrack at 7 for opening ceremonies. On March 25th, American Flat Track roars into Sonoya Raceway just south of Atlanta, Georgia. Crowd on their feet, ready to go. There's four to four, going into one. Witness epic bar to bar racing. Interact with the racers. Live in the moment of victory. The Yamaha Sonoya Short Track on Saturday, March 25th. Get your tickets now at AmericanFlatTrack.com. Track hey everybody, Randy Dye here for Daytona Dodge Chrysler Jeep and Ram. Ram trucks are back in stock. It's hard to ignore the luxurious interior, 12-inch touchscreen display, heated front and rear seats, and Apple CarPlay capabilities. Plus, they're just plain fun to drive. Daytona Dodge Chrysler Jeep and Ram where we won't waste your time or money. Right now, during the Ram Truck Month sales event, save up to $10,000 off MSRP on all new Ram models in stock. SolarFit has really helped us eliminate our electrical bill. It now is $9.31 a month, and it uh, used to run five and $600 a month. SolarFit is highly recommended. Most honest people you'll ever want to meet. Everybody was professional. 
and everything they promise, they produce. And it's the most beautiful thing I ever did, you know, we ever yeah. did in Lots of Ways. So happy. Uh, I wish I pulled the trigger a couple of years ago. Ready to go solar? Call us today for your free energy evaluation. When you think of a ride, you think of quality. When it comes to hitting the ground and, and protecting your head, I wouldn't wear anything else. The design of it is round and smooth, so when you're rolling through the dirt, your helmet doesn't catch the dirt and hurt your neck. Safety in flat track and motorsports in general is probably the biggest concern. Obviously, we're all here to win. At the end of the day, we're all concerned about our well-being, and for that, you want to have the, the best gear on it, you know, and for me, a ride is the best choice. P Racing Fuels. No matter what motorcycle you race or ride, amateur or pro, we have a fuel to make more power. Keep your bike running cool with VP Stay Frosty Coolant, available in two formulas. Race ready, designed to be glycol free and track approved, and high performance with freeze protection for street applications. Visit VPRacingFuels.com to learn more. Back on Track, a Rookies of 79 501c3 charity, was established in 2009 by former racers to help injured racers get back on the racetrack or the track of life. Assistance is provided to injured racers through our posted schedule of benefits and special fundraising programs where 100% of your donation goes directly to ease the financial burden from an injury sustained on the racetrack. Please consider supporting injured racers by purchasing a 50-50 ticket at today's event. Check us out on the web at BackOnTrack79.com and donate today. Every donation is tax deductible and will make a difference in an injured racer's life. Rent tools and equipment from more than 70 leading brands, plus the full line of cat machines, big and small. The right equipment, the right technology, the right team. All right when and where you need it. Visit CatRentalStore.com. Cometic Gasket is the official gasket of American Flat Track. For decades, American Flat Track champions have depended on Cometic to seal their engines. Cometic Gaskets are the professional standard for racers who demand the very best. For more information, log on to Cometic.com. Cometic Gasket, sealing champions since 1989. Lincoln Welders is the official welder of American Flat Track Racing. When it comes to welding, cutting equipment, and safety apparel, Lincoln Electric is the choice. Go to LincolnElectric.com for all your welding, cutting, and safety apparel needs. And remember to hashtag WeldRed with all your projects.
Memphis Shades brings you a whole new level of style when it comes to motorcycle windshields and fairings. The quality, style, and selection set these products apart from the pack. Memphis Shades designs and builds all windshields, fairings, and hardware in-house. Raw materials in, finished goods out. Made in Memphis. Style that works. Mobile View has been providing state-of-the-art LED video screens to sporting and special events throughout the U.S. and Canada since 1999. We use our vast experience of thousands of events to help guide the process of finding the right size screen to help make your event a memorable experience for your fans and sponsors. Parts Unlimited, the people behind We Support the Sport, welcome you to this high action event. We are proud to join with race fans everywhere in working to ensure that our sport gets bigger and more exciting each season. And you too can support the sport by visiting your local dealer who stocks products from Parts Unlimited. They've got the very best in high performance parts and accessories and the best support network in the business. Parts Unlimited. We support the sport. Progressive is proud to be America's number one motorcycle insurer, protecting one out of every three insured riders. And they also offer coverage for your boat, RV, and other adventure vehicles. Quote motorcycle insurance online in as little as three minutes or bundle your insurance together today. Sideburn is the world's finest Go Fast Turn Left magazine. It's available to buy at Progressive AFT's Marketplace and is the official magazine of Progressive American Flat Track. For more information, visit sideburnmagazine.com. The all new Yamaha YZ450F. Narrower, more compact, and lighter. Built to do one thing, go faster. Rev up to get fueled by mission as the world's most extreme dirt track riders and tastiest products come together to fuel your flavor. Fully loaded tacos, fast wraps, piled high nachos. Whatever you crave, Mission will help you be race ready with easy to make recipes that will take your race day to the finish line. Keep your racing delicious and enjoy all the mouth-watering action. Brought to you by Mission Foods. Too fast, too tasty. Daytona Dodge Chrysler Jeep and Ram is a proud partner of American Flat Track. Bring your ticket stop to Daytona Dodge Chrysler Jeep and Ram during Ram Truck Month and receive an additional $1,000 off your next new Ram truck purchase. Offer ends March 31st, 2023. So hurry into Daytona Dodge Chrysler Jeep and Ram, where we won't waste your time or money. On Saturday, April 1st, the world's premier dirt track motorcycle racing returns to Arizona Bike Week. We got a barn burner, ladies and gentlemen, Arizona. Super Twins main event. Who's going to win it? Meet your favorite riders. Feel the adrenaline rush. This is Progressive American Flat Track. The Arizona Super TT on Saturday, April 1st. Get your tickets now at AmericanFlatTrack.com.
October 10th, 2021, Charlotte, North Carolina. The day the 2021 Progressive American Flat Track Series came to an unprecedented end. Jared Meese, after one of the most courageous seasons of all time, held a slim point lead over the two-time defending champion Briar Bauman. The narrative was simple. Win and you're the champion. The younger champ took control of the situation early and left no doubt of his willingness to be a three-time champion. In the blink of an eye, their fate was decided. One championship won, one championship lost, and a first-time winner on top of the podium. With last season now a distant memory, these dirt track gladiators are gearing up for a brand new season. The chase for the next Progressive American Flat Track Grand National Champion starts today. Hi everybody, welcome to the Progressive American Flat Track season opener for the 2022 championship year. Today is the Mission Volusia Half Mile One, sponsored by Daytona Dodge. I'm Ralph Shaheen, alongside my good buddy, Scotty Dubler. Scotty, your family is three generations in American flat track racing. You've seen it all. Why is there so much excitement heading into 2022? Well, Ralph, it's like the first day of school. Everybody's got new clothes. Everybody's got new rides. I want to see how it all unfolds. Plus, we're going to a few new tracks this season, and I can't wait to get the show started right here on Fox Sports. It's going to be a great year, and one of the reasons why there's so much momentum heading into this season opener is because, as Scotty said, how 21 ended. Let's take you back to the end of the year and show you how the championship was clinched. I think Breyer's mentality going in was win it or wear it. And, and, and that was the mentality that he had to have. He was just like, this is what I got to do. This is what I got to do. I'm going to do it. And hats off to him for sending it. I found a pretty good line through the wet spot. If you did it right, it gave you a lot of traction, a lot of grip, and it shot you forward. It was one of those deals, like, it's either really good or really bad. And it was really good for six and a half minutes, and then it was really bad. So We see Bauman just about losing. Oh, no, Bauman's down. down. Oh, Bauman is down. And oh. oh. A huge crash! Good God! Unbelievable was that Halbert! But it was definitely something that you're like, what the heck were you doing? Why did, why did you let that happen? Or what, what did you do as far as preparation goes to, to let that be a scenario or even be a, a situation? And sometimes you can't do it, you know, you can't fight the track that much or whatever the scenario is, but maybe there's something I could have done differently. It was very rewarding, but um, in the moment, you know, I think it was one of my favorite championships I ever won out of the seven so just because of what it went through with the injury but you know in all honesty they're all sweet wow what a finish to the year Scotty it went down to the wire that's what we look for in flat track and it definitely was the hardest championship Jared Meese had to earn well there's so many stories in the pit area as we get ready to go racing before we head out to the racetrack let's go to the pit area here's Kristen B with a preview for some riders, 2021 is in the rear view mirror. For others, they're carrying that energy and momentum into Volusia and the start of a brand new season. Now, I want to introduce my teammate, Ricky Rackman. Thanks, Kristen. 2021 was a good year for Brandon Robinson. He had two wins, but then he was plagued with multiple injuries. 2022, he's starting the season healthy and strong. The Monster Energy Essence and Racing Yamaha team is debuting a brand new MT07DT in the Super Twins class to be ridden by JD Beach and Dallas Daniels, who recently graduated from the singles class, having earned two consecutive singles class titles. He's easily one of the most anticipated riders to be making their premier class debut. Also, keep an eye on Trevor Bruner, who is also making his debut for Essence and Racing Yamaha in the singles class. Let's talk for a second about Turner Racing Hondas. This year, they've got Dalton Gauthier, they've got Chase Sadoff, they've got Morgan Mishler. The team looked good earlier, but they also have a lot of confidence, and I think the team is having a lot of fun. This season, it's Max Whale coming in with elevated confidence in his second year on board the Red Bull KTM 450. He's also joined by a new teammate, Cody Kopp, who is expected to make an immediate impact in the singles class. 
Of course, every rider wants a championship. Last season, Corey Texter clinched his championship with only two races to go. This year, this guy is calling it quits, and there is nothing he would like more than end his season with another championship, right? You said it, man. You said it. Well said. And it's Shayna Texter with a new beginning in the Super Twins class. As the winningest AFT singles rider in history, she now sets her sights towards the Premier class. And keeping it in the family, brother-in-law Bronson Bauman will join Shayna and Briar in contention for a Super Twins title aboard the latest motor racing Harley Davidson in the Super Twins class. Thanks, guys. Appreciate the preview. Well, when we come back to Volusia County Speedway Park, it's time to go racing here on Fox Sports. American Flat Track Series is being brought to you by Law Tigers. You never have to ride alone. And by Cat Rental Store, the official heavy equipment supplier of Progressive American Flat Track. Welcome back to Volusia County Speedway Park as we're getting ready to go to the Too Fast Too Tasty Challenge coming up. But before we do that, let's take a look at our Mission Food Super Twins highlights from their semis, beginning with semi number one.